Yeah, you say that, but okay. <laughs> hey everybody, oh, welcome to Lawful Stupid RPG with me, your DM for the evening. My name is Harry. Uh, you may recognize me from the Pantheon campaign. And today we've got a bit of a treat because we're going to jump straight back into that universe, but we're going to take a step into the distant past of the Pantheon universe and witness an event which possibly has large consequences in what we call the modern world of Pantheon. But before we get stuck into that, I've got a few announcements regarding the Lawful Stupid RPG Jam channel, which you may find interesting. So make sure that um, you realize that this Saturday, the channel will be having a day off. So if you are a regular viewer, don't feel the uh, obligation to come and watch us goof off tomorrow. There will be no one here. So get lost, go and do something else more interesting than watching DD. And uh, next Friday, you will not be seeing Pantheon. You'll be seeing Tiefling Tots 2, the sequel to the um, highly anticipated sequel to Tiefling Tots, uh, where we the, uh, I think they're Tieflings that are kids and they make a lot of mayhem. I'm right in saying that, right? That pretty much sums it up. That's pretty much it. That's cool. Okay, right. So um, also next Saturday, not tomorrow, there will be a uh, one shot run by one of our very talented DMs, Tiss. So make sure you tune in for that too. Um, auditions are now over for new players, but we are always looking for talented DMs. So if your life ambition is to be like me, then <laughs> it's a great opportunity to get on this channel and start strutting your stuff in front of a few good players. So yeah, definitely tune in for that. And last but certainly not least, next week we are going to be doing the first publication of the Lawful Stupid RPG webcomic series. Um, I've heard is a lot of really cool stuff planned for that and it looks great. So make sure to look out for that. But yeah, I think that's everything I have to say before we um, jump into the Pantheon one shot. Affectionately titled the Adonia Festival the more versed in Greek history will realize what this means, but we will educate as we go because that's what this is in Pantheon. It's not quite D&D, it's not quite classical Greek education, but it's a bit of both because the most important thing is everybody learns something along the way. And also, hey, everyone's getting some good exercise too. So, you know, okay, let's jump in. <laughs> so that teacher at school that's like, this is definitely not boring. This is going to be a fun <laughs> <Yeah>. one. <laughs> Everyone's snoozing off immediately. <laughs> a surefire warning sign that this is going to be a boring session. So make sure to stay for the whole thing. Uh, right. But okay. So today is the long-awaited Adonia Festival. This happens once a year, and the only people usually who are allowed the privilege of attending such a luminary festival in the ancient Greek world are either those who are gods or those who can count themselves as something close to a god. So you're thinking things like dryads, nymphs, gods, demigods, ancient creatures. But um, this time it's different. There is a highly um, admired Roman poet named Ovid, who for the first time has been offered a place to attend the Adonia festival on the island of Aea uh, with six entourage to accompany him. So for the first time ever, um, some mortals are going to be able to attend this festival. So we join Ovid, the um, very renowned Roman poet, who is not only the subject of our admiration of mortals, but from those up high as well. Everybody is all abuzz with how amazing Ovid is as a poet, and they trust him to accurately record the Adonia festival as it happens. So as you are right now, you find yourselves on a trireme, a ship, a long sort of battleship of ancient Greek times that combines the methods of sails and of oars. And this thing cuts through the waves and salty sea spray fills the air. And there is a little place on the ship that you can hide from the occasional rogue splash of salt water, which hits your eyes and soaks into the clothes that you're wearing. Whether or not you are used to being on ships before, this one feels as though it's being urged forward with some unnatural force, as though Poseidon himself is urging you towards your destination. You can hear from below the constant drumming, which dictates the rhythm with which the slaves row those colossal oars, some 50 on each side of the ship. But on the top deck, where you all sit, around some crates to one side of the deck with your good friend Ovid, who has invited you along to this festival, um, the party is already in full swing. 
you are unfortunately sharing the trireme with a group of satyrs and nymphs, all surrounding a quite portly man, a heavy set man who sits in the center of them with a couch that he seems to have brought himself, just so he can lie down on the ship and have grapes fed to him by the satyrs that pass. These people are already carrying cups of wine, already indulging, and you'll see them, some of them already emptying their stomachs over the side of the ship, having taken to the party a bit too early. So as you sit here on some upturned crates, Ovid, the man who accompanies you, wrings his hands together quite worriedly. He seems something nervous is going on with Ovid as he directs your vision to where the ship is headed. And indeed, he's right, because out of nowhere, the ship seems to have taken course to what looks to be a giant storm in the distance. And it is directing that way on purpose, it seems. You are going full speed ahead into what looks like a lazy black cloud with storm flashes in the center of it, which is just resting on the ocean on the ocean surface. The fact that any kind of trireme would make this its destination is certainly unusual. And I'll say that immediately, Ovid, already sort of, you can't tell whether it's sweat from nervousness, tears from his worry, or just the sea that's caught on his brow. But he does turn to you. Excuse me, he'll say, he'll turn to you, Belagost, and he'll say, uh, but Belagost, if, if, if you wouldn't mind, take, take Rumio with you. Uh, please check with the captain to make sure that we are on course for this. And if so, could you ask him why? Right, uh, of course, Ovid, uh, my pleasure. Uh, come now, uh, we've got to go and see the men. Of I course. kind of gingerly lift myself up. The boat's rocking does not sit well with Belagost at all. Mm. Mm. Yes, uh, Grumio, uh, would you mind leading the way this... Uh, Oh, this water is rough, and I don't like it. Yeah, no worries. I think I remember where the um, captain's quarters is. Come on. Sure thing. And um, so you head to the captain's quarters, and yes, Belagos, this ship is uncomfortable for you. A man who has not only got his not got to see legs, but he's not got to see anything. He is just a man completely out of his element. So go ahead, Belagos, roll me that constitution saving throw. And oh, suffer right. the same thing we all do upon our first time on a vessel on the high seas. And let's see. There we go. We wait with bated breath. <laughs> An 18. Yes. You can feel the contents of your stomach, perhaps that wine and bread you had for breakfast, beginning to gargle and bubble in your stomach and begin to lift up your gullet. But with an iron will, you manage to keep it down. Um, you can, unfortunately, not the same cannot be said for many of the satyrs and nymphs on board who empty their bowels into the empty their bowels. No, empty their <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's awkward. And yeah. we're off. Oh god. Well, hang on. That is something that may, satyrs may or may not do. I mean, they're not a they're a pretty rowdy bunch, but in this case, they're thankfully not doing that. They are <laughs> vomiting into the ocean, not accustomed to. But well, they've drank too much and they're on the high seas, a very dangerous combination. So yeah, Grumio and Belagos, you find the captain at the helm, um, was basically directing where the ship is heading with the sails and the oars. There is no um, wheel on the ship. There is a large um, rudder, which sort of uh, directs its pattern of movement. And he seems to have it pointed straight and the winds are taking him towards the storm in the distance, by which by this point, you'll begin to start hearing on the horizon some five miles away, huge sounds of cacophonous thunder as they reach across the flat ocean to the, to the boat quite easily. So um, he sees you coming up, a man of blue skin and where his ears should be, there are fins, webbed fins. And he narrows his eyes, looking at you as you and as you sort of step up to the uh, the poop deck. Uh, is there any particular reason why we're heading towards that thing there? He means it's... the storm. Uh, yes, you have seen the storm. I am not used to transporting mortals. I didn't think a explanation was necessary. Well, uh, our our master is quite concerned. No. Oh. He needs not be. I have heard that humans can survive storms. Perhaps I am wrong. Perhaps it will test you. I myself was not comfortable with the idea of sharing my ship with mortals. But of course, the storm only serves to make sure mortals do not interrupt the festival once we arrive. Hmm. Well, I suppose that's about as good an explanation as we could expect. Uh, well, I do love your vessel. 
I can't say that I approve of the method of travel. Is well, there any place we could take over to be a bit safer from the storm? Roll persuasion, Jack. All right, persuasion. It's gonna be. What's that? A. <laughs> oh, yeah, I say. It was enough I did already to allow mortals on my deck. I shall not let them below. I don't know what you do down there. You go and gnaw on the wood or you go and pester the slaves. I've never transported humans before. I find them a vile species. I never transported any mortals, any dwarves or humans. So both of you will just have to weather the storm. <laughs> well, um, uh, appreciate the kind words. Uh, Belagos, maybe we just go. It's probably the best idea anyway. Yes, I agree with this idea. Good luck. I'm sure you're going to get washed overboard, but rest safe in the fact that if you do, it will be a fairly quick death at the very least. All right. And Smooth that, sailing, Captain. He just basically turns back to his helmsman and points towards the storm, and although it's unnecessary, ushers them to it with more gusto, more speed. And while this is going on, um, the satyrs and the fawns and this figure in the middle of them, this pot-bellied man with a large beard, uh, their party begins to expand. So it takes up the whole deck and you'll find yourselves often having your elbows knocked by satyrs dancing past you, by ill-tempered or um, inconsiderate nymphs that sort of um, dance between the crates that you're sitting on, often poke at you in a sort of goading way. And we'll say that, um, Evelyn, you'll even have a satyr come up to you and say, <laughs> I don't see many of your kind around here. You fancy your dance with me on the decks? I suppose I could uh, be persuaded to dance with you. Oh, please. Right, indeed. And um, he'll take your hand with a sort of uncomfortably tight grip, and he'll just drag you from your seat rather than let you stand up, as he just pushes you into a sort of kaylee like massacre of a dance. It's almost like the ancient equivalent of a mosh pit erupting on this trireme, which is already suffering the effects of the storm's wave smashing against the sides of the boat, the vessel itself. Um, he whips you around, and he basically gives you the whole um, perimeter of the ship. And not only he dances with you, but he passes you to dance with other people. And um, you get offered wine, you get offered bread, you get offered dried fruits and even some honey as you're um, basically forced forward to um, free the people to the man sitting with his pot belly as they all step back as you reach him. And he just looks up from his, so his I call it a sofa. It's sort of, um, you know, a lounging chair, which he lies on sideways and through a mouthful of grapes, he speaks up to you and says, <laughs> I don't know, who are you exactly? Violetta Galliari, at your service. Coming with the great poet Ovid, of course. Oh yes, Ovid. <laughs> I look forward to what he makes of the festival. My name is Dionysus. Perhaps you've heard of me. Yes, Dionysus. It is a great pleasure to meet you. And he'll reach out his hand in a sort of way that he expects you not to grab it, but to worship it. With it basically fingers down in a limp way. I take his hand. <laughs> <laughs> you give it a kiss, yeah. And he just laughs and says, <laughs> Always lovely to find somebody who knows how God should be treated? I myself love to be pampered. And um, <laughs> he'll say this while grapes are fed to him, of course, just to drive home the fact that he is a complete hedonist. Of course, I can see you have a very good taste in wine and grapes and women. <laughs> indeed I do, indeed I do. <laughs> and um, you'll see by this point that when you get closer to him, it's just not as though he has any particular thing that would denote him as a god rather than a strange sort of purple hue that seems to have surround him like an aura. Um, sort of a hazy sort of a steam that sort of envelops him. As you look closer, you can see it surrounding him and emanating from him. Um, this steam seems to be the thing that's intoxicating the satyrs. So go ahead and roll me a wisdom saving throw as you get closer to the figure known as Dionysus. Seven. Seven, yeah. You are overcome with the insatiable urge to dance and sing and laugh and joke and just drink the night away on this trireme as you um, surrender yourselves to the passions and the complete decadence of a satyr's lifestyle. As you are dragged around the ship for some time and um, you basically spend the rest of the voyage, even into the storm, dancing with the satyrs and the nymphs. 
But as this is going on, um, Ovid will look at them, uh, look at this expanding party as Grumio and uh, Belagos return, and he'll turn to um, say to Violetta, and he'll say, "I, I don't suppose that, uh, uh, I don't suppose that. Oh, sorry, you are Violetta, aren't you? Actually, right, yeah. on the thing, yeah. He'll turn to sorry Rainia and say, "I don't suppose that uh, there'll be a uh, rejoining us. She, she looks like she's quite enjoying it." Uh, excuse me, I didn't quite understand what you just said. <laughs> you say, look, Violetta, she's dancing with the satyrs. Is it possible you could go and fetch her? I, I don't want us to show up and be as rambunctious as this, this few people. Oh, I see. So you approve of her dancing with you, but not the satyrs. All right, I'll go see if I can intervene. Well, I, I like to dance, yes, but... And then as, as he tries to explain himself, I say... I just walk away. <laughs> make yourself scarce and get into the um, into the tussle that could very only on the very edges of the definition be called still a dance, as it's more just a uh, frenzy now of uh, people drinking wine. And, and at this point, the boat does enter the storm. Um... And but just before it does, thankful to Ovid especially, and um, two more Oceanids, which you'd know from their blue skin and their sort of um, finned appearance, they approach the helm of the trireme and they begin to conjure up globes of water. And as you can feel the rain touching your face for a split second, it's not long before they erupt this globe of water into the short distance ahead of them, and a barrier is consumed in the head of the ship which shields it from the effects of the storm and the rain and the lightning and the winds, as it seems eerily still on the inside of this barrier, as they channel this powerful shielding magic against the storm as it passes through unfazed. You hear a cry from the back of the boat. Ah, what is this? I thought we had a storm coming. Ah! <laughs> Taking my staff. I like the thunder. I like the lightning. Ah! One of the crewmen will turn to you and they'll say, Well, did you really think that we would best this storm? The whole purpose of this storm is to sink ships that tra- travel too close to the island. Well, I, I know not much, of, uh, not much of the time on the water, but I do like the storm. I like it. I hold my staff up and some lightning crackles out of my end of my staff. It is my power, you see? And then my tusks start to have little uh, static electricity around as well. Ooh, okay, that's cool. Um, he'll say, yeah, he'll sort of see this electricity. He'll take a step back and sort of grip his um, his mop, which he's using to just swab the ship, which he's doing in the rain for some reason, but let's ignore that. Um, <laughs> so he looks to you and he'll say, yes, you like the storm, but I don't suppose you like to swim. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you don't look like a very accomplished swimmer. That is, unless those ears can flap. Ha! Ah, but they can. And then I cast levitate on myself and my ears start to flap and I float above the ship a little bit. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Got bloody dum- Dumbo in the party. <laughs> yep. Worth the, <laughs> worth the second level spell slot for that. Oh, yeah, definitely. Mark that off straight away. <laughs> you impress. I to, like, flap and float down towards Ovid. Oh, it is. They're going to look up you, uh, behind you. Uh, you're silhouetted against the giant storm. Um, and he just looks up at you and says, uh, d- "Do let yourself down slowly, Sam. You can't risk sinking a vessel with your gargantuan weight." I- Everyone with the fat jokes today. I get it. I get it. <laughs> and I'll bring myself down a little bit more, and the the ears kind of still twitch, but I'm I'm on the ground now. Goodness, Ovid, are we ready to party? Why are you sitting here over here? Well, there, there's nymphs and satyrs dancing, defecating all over the deck. What's going on here? technically true i've said that it is canon um <laughs> they are defecating um, but, um so he'll just look up to you and he says my purpose here is to record and i would be thankful if you could just protect me while i do this these satyrs these nymphs they're very strange they don't pay attention to our mortal sensibilities i don't really know what to expect on this island it's a great honor but i imagine it's very dangerous isn't this the nature of poetry? You take the unexpected and you turn it into something beautiful. Uh, yeah. you, uh, you speak wise, Shem, indeed. Perhaps uh, I should have a single glass of this delectable wine that you... That's uh, the so spirit, really- Ovid. That is the spirit, sir. Uh, uh. And he'll say, turn to you, Artemisia. And rather than standing up, he'll say, Artemisia, please fetch me a, a bowl of wine from those satyrs over there, if, if you wouldn't be so, 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 uh, if you would be so kind to do so. I suppose I can handle that for you. I'd be more than honored to fetch you wine, sir. 
Do you have a particular preference? No, whatever the sanctus are drinking seems to be acceptable. I'm not, I'm not a connoisseur by any means, but I will, I, will try, I, will try, I will try whatever they have. It seems very good. I shall return swiftly. And she'll get up and go and fetch him a, a bowl of wine. Sure. They say it's drink from very wide bowls. And you'll see that when you drink from them, um, the sort of um, the opaqueness of the wine sort of um, makes it difficult to see what's in the base of the bowl. But as they drink them, the more wine that gets uh, sunk away into their stomachs reveals the pictures of the scenes of battle beneath that have been delicately painted onto these bowls. And you've managed to approach a sailor that's holding one. Um, and he just looks at you, and as he sees you holding your hands out, he'll just instantly turn away in sort of a guarding it way. It will, what do you want? I would like to try, sample some of your wine, please. My my teacher, he requests wine. Perhaps you would be would like to share. I don't want to share. What do you have? You have anything good? I suppose it depends on what you consider good. The goddess Artemis has blessed me with many things. Oh, you follow Artemis, huh? Yes, I know she is in attendance today. At the air, maybe you will have the chance to meet her, yes? I would be most honored to meet my goddess. Ah, indeed. Well, how about this? I will give you this wine. But you must promise me to put in a good word with Artemis for me. My name is Poricles. Poricles, I would be most honored to mention you in front of my goddess. Tell her I have the veracity of a bull and the ruggedness of the minotaur. Tell her I can swim like the the Hippocrabus. I would be very glad to do so. When I see my lady, as I present any gifts, I would love to mention your name. Uh, What is my name? Horacles. Horacles, you remembered. Very good. And he'll, get, he'll, hand you, he'll hand you the wine over. Not all challenges are sold with rolls. <laughs> <laughs> and he hands the wine over to you. Indeed, She'll yeah. just take it and bow and head back to Ovid. Sure. And he keeps his eye on you as you head over. And Ovid will welcome you back, saying, <laughs> Hand it to me, please. I, I look, I, I, I let you wet my whistle, so they say. Of course, sir. Your wine, as you requested. Um, Ovid, do you want me to test that for you? Uh, how, how, how much are you going to test it? J- just a <laughs> sip. I mean, this is these are immortals uh, drinking from this wine. We don't know what's in it. That is a uh, true, true enough, Grimio. If someone is to die on this ship, best it be you. And right, I am your slave, of course. I'll take the ball and just do a little sip. Sure. Of. Roll me a con saving throw. <laughs> better, better me than Ovid. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, solid eight. An eight, yeah. It turns out it's a simple wine. I just wanted to uh, keep you on edge. So. Who knows <laughs> what these are? <laughs> yeah, it is a simple wine. Uh, it's very red, very dark, almost black, and it's um, very difficult to see through. Uh, Grumio will hold it for a moment, then uh, put it down. It, it seems fine, Ovid. Uh, very well. Let's just judge its quality together then. And um, he'll drink, lift it up, and he'll pretty much drain the whole thing uh, in one. And just you hear him gulp, but without setting the bowl down. And soon enough, he just empties the bowl, and it's just, oh, yes, it's, it's very good, actually. I, I think I'd like another. But best that I keep my head straight for what's to come. I, I want to be able to record things as they happen, not with the weight over me of Dionysus's delicious wine. And um, he'll throw the bowl over the side of the ship. Whether or not that's customary, you don't know, but <laughs> he's maybe just being exceptionally rude. Meanwhile- And it the... floats there still to this day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The more, the more adventurous viewers can go and check, I swear I will give you the sea charts. <laughs> Please go and recover that. Um, but yeah, in the presence of Dionysus and his audience, um, that's Violetta, uh, still sort of in gentle conversation with him, but soon enough, Violetta, you will uh, find Rainier, I'd say, uh, sort of close to you. Uh, enjoying the party. <laughs> uh, yes, it, it seems that you are as well. Um, uh, it is wonderful. <laughs> yes, you, you, you seem to have an admirer. Uh, we might want to head back toward Ovid. Dionysus seems to be a little upset that you're fraternizing with the satyrs. Oh, is he? 
I am sorry. And I'll, I guess, look back toward Dionysus. It appears I must uh, attend to Ovid now. And he'll just like do one of those typical hedonist sort of barely efforted waves, like, yes, yes, ta-ta. Make sure to look me up on the island once we arrive, yes. <laughs> but of course. Yeah. No, give him Almost a slow bow. Yeah, sure, absolutely. He just takes a notice of your little bow. He doesn't offer one in return. And you can just sense this sort of um, jovial but lecherous sort of um, aura that surrounds him, sort of an overindulgence that is typical of the hedonist that he's become to be known as. But yeah, um, these oceanids, they still shield the ship from the rainfall. And I will ask um, Shem, how did you get down from that levitate? Did you drop or did you just... Yeah, I sort of just let the like the ear flaps bring me down and sort of land gracefully but they're still flapping that's yeah. fine i'm just going to make sure you didn't drop from like 10 feet high under the ship because you weigh like fun. i should have done that but weigh like 800 pounds or something <laughs> 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 that would be interesting yeah but yeah as the ship makes its way through the storm you can see the almighty power of zeus sort of uh, striking lightning in the sky sometimes but not always striking the ocean floor um there is no other vessels in sight in this uh, storm you can barely see 30 feet off the sides of the bow but straight ahead, you do begin to see the storm um, sort of begin to break a little, as though like the bright sort of black cloud it just um, begins to uh, you catch a sort of a glimpse of a tower between them, uh, and then the storm sort of reforms around the ship. But um, sure enough, as the ship moves on, um, the storm wavers, and through this sort of thick rainfall. Um, from which the ship remains dry, of course, you see this pearlescent monolithic white tower sort of made from absolute perfect uh, marble in the distance. And indeed, it seems to be propped up there on some kind of small island upon which there are several large temples and um, symposiums and agoras which have been constructed, simple homes, all of which look perfect, as though this sort of is a very paradise-like island. And um, as the trireme breaks from the storm, you get this strange sensation that's um i sure I, I don't like using modern metaphors but if, you, if you've ever been in like a heavily air-conditioned store and you walk out into the extreme still heat that's what it feels like as the winds are suddenly drop from you and you are in effectively the eye of the storm here as it surrounds this island and makes it impenetrable to other more curious more adventurous mortals you however have been offered access to this small still beautiful island in the center of the storm um so yeah uh you feel the sort of the sun finally bathe over you you've not seen it for some time with the rain and the weather um as Obed looks up to the sky and says marvelous magic yeah, nothing like anything i can do what about you sham you know storms could you do this oh uh well someday perhaps but uh you know i'm i'm still I'm still learning to fly, as they say. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Perhaps one day, Shane, perhaps one day. And um, the ship will just continue now more relying on its rowers than its than its winds. It makes its way closer to the docks. And it docks, um, turns to like a very slow quarter row as it sort of turns sideways very deftly and manages to dock itself. Not just a minute after a trireme that was previously there has taken off. There's an uproarious cheer from the satyrs. As a gangplank, a barriered gangplank of impetuous design, impetuous design, impeccable design, is um, is sort of loaded onto this ship and offered a way down onto the dock area, by which the sailors just crowd on in the same way that people do when they exit an aeroplane. So the first one off is always the best. Got to stop it with the modern metaphors, although they're very <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But so, um, party, what you're doing is Ovid, sort of sits there and he sits back waiting for everyone else to depart. As the captain takes some steps down, looks at each of you and he says, I see everybody has survived. It is good. I was looking forward to seeing one of you go overboard, though. Well, you, you made it sound a lot more harsh than it actually was. I like to watch. Yeah. Yes, you saw the, uh, the ocean intersection. I like to watch mm, immortals not suffer, so to speak, but sweat. <laughs> I, for one, am glad we're finally back to solid ground. All that travel and all that storm. And you worked me up right fine, but stop that. Uh, <laughs> I think, my friends, you will find this island a sight more dangerous than any storm, especially for a mortal. Is that a challenge? <laughs> Let me just say this, my friend. 
I would be surprised if I leave with seven mortals as I have arrived. But who am I to spoil the surprise? Please, leave this vessel and I will be here when you wish to depart back to mainland Greece. Uh, I don't know if we'll be coming back the same way, considering you sound like a crazed murderer, so <laughs> uh, not, the, not the most pleasant. Uh, thank you for the flight. I appreciate it. Like, what is this? This... It's pretty strange that you would just... Anyway, Ovid, we should make you have a grand entrance here. You should have some way of entering that, that they know the great poet is finally here. I was just trying to sneak under the radar. What's radar, you ask? It's a good question. <laughs> That's right. I would like to know. <laughs> it's not know what radar is. I, I try and sneak under the map, so they speak, so, so they say. Ah, You've heard the yes. expression, it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> no, yes, I hope that they update that at some point, because that's weird. Uh, um, let's see here. Uh, who can make Ovid uh, fly? No? Uh, uh, steady on. I, I don't want to fly. It'd be quite dangerous. Ah, well, if you're not up to it, then fine. I guess we could do something else. Uh, maybe, maybe some, some lights... Uh, some big explosions, uh, uh, magical, of course. Uh, yes, very good, very good, uh, indeed. Okay, um, here, uh, Belagost, you and uh, you and Artemisia, you hold him up in the sky, and then I will shoot uh, thunder and lightning around him, and we will represent the great Ovid here. Well, wouldn't that represent like Zeus? You don't want to really step on his toes, do you? Oh. Yeah, 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 it's a very, very accurate, very accurate observation, Grumier. I, I wouldn't want to make myself seem like Zeus. But um, perhaps being lifted is a good idea if any of you are up to the task. I am old, I'm only skin and bones, after all. I will lift you of it. I am rather strong myself. I, I know this, Grumier, I welcome it. Please, I know the sort of like start clambering up your shoulders, like, like an old man spider. <laughs> Way ahead of time. If someone else help me, I, I could fall off if I do this alone. <laughs> <laughs> I'll help him. Push him crouch up. down so he has an easier time. Sure. Artemisia will help. Sure. Artemisia and Belagos are each supporting um, over it as he cl clambers up on Violetta's back. It does not look majestic whatsoever, but still, <laughs> he's just basically on her, on ah, her back. It looks great, David. Great. Piggyback Wonderful. style. <laughs> I am starting to question the validity of this. Can I perhaps... Offer a different suggestion. Of course, uh, Rania. What I know of the gods is that they're pretty proud of themselves, and us mortals aren't usually allowed to this shindig. Perhaps it would be better if we didn't bust in really obnoxiously. She's got a point. I wouldn't want to upstage a god. I know they have very short tempers. Personally, right. I'd like to have all of us return, so maybe we keep it down. Uh, don't worry about Grimio, he's ready to give his life for me. I I'm not worried about it, but perhaps we could, you know, save that for another time. Uh, I'd be inclined to agree with you. Uh, don't fancy staying on this island or under the island for the rest of my time. I don't uh fancy dying on the island. That's what I mean. <laughs> Neither do I, and I don't want to start out on the wrong foot. So perhaps uh, for now, Ovid, uh, you walk. <laughs> no. uh, very well. He you know, sort of gets down and sort of lifts up his robe, his gangly sort of, he's quite an old man, Ovid, at this point. You know, he's a very good poet, but he's seeing the signs of age. And as he lifts up his robe, you see this very sort of knobbly knees and thin calves, as you expect of an old man. And he sort of lifts them up as he makes his way down the gangplank. Uh, come with me, we shouldn't waste time. There's no other mortals on this island, so perhaps best we stick together. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to try to help Ovid vent down as well. Uh, as he's going down the gangplank, I'll give my shoulder. I'm a bit short, so he should be able to lean on it fairly easy, I guess. Okay, sure, yeah. And he'll, he'll hold on to your shoulder. Being a dwarf, not too difficult. He doesn't have to hunch down. And so this sort of makes his way down the gangplank. Not entirely necessary in his age, but it is helpful to him. Um, at the bottom of the gangplank, um, you'll see a woman sort of who's just finished greeting um, some of the dryads and the nymphs that came off the ship with the satyrs. The satyrs themselves in sort of football hooligan, stag do holiday style, just 
bandied down the gangplank straight into the island. You could hear their cheers, even as you had the conversation with Ovid. But the nymphs, at least, showed the proper courtesy to their host, who seems to be waiting at the bottom of the gangplank. And she um, she waits there. You see a woman dressed in decadent purples, a royal sort of golds in her toga, her robes, as she holds um, a simple scroll in one hand and looks up at you. And as you look down at this woman who is um, on a gradient lower than yours at this point, she'll simply regard each of you with a bit of a sort of narrowed, suspicious gaze. Around her feet, you see several lion cubs um, sort of playing with each other and stalking one another, as lion cubs tend to do. Um, by several, I mean like at least a dozen seem to swarm around her feet as she just looks up at you. Those are quite adorable lions. Where did you get them? Ah, you like them. They're native to the island, actually. I, They do tend to take to me, though, and they serve as protectors in the, um, well, when, when we're not having a festival like this. Uh, welcome, welcome. What's your name? I am Artemisia. Artemisia, I assume you are here with um, what I take to be Ovid there, is that Ovid? Yes, that is correct. Oh, wonderful. I've never really had a mortal on this island. Well, there was that... No, no, let's not speak of that, actually. Um, never had a mortal on this island ever survive, but <laughs> I speak too much. Um, welcome, welcome to Aia. My name is Circe. I, I look over this island and the lions help me protect it, and I... Well, I, I, I look forward to seeing what you think. I, I've never heard of living mortals, um, their take on the island, their understanding of it. I imagine things work a little different here than they do on your homeland. Where are you from? I hail from Greece, my lady. Indeed, Greece. Yes, I've been there before myself. Um, well, please, uh, please. Uh, and who are your friends here? What, what, is, what, is, this, what is this creature, this, gar this gargantuan monstrosity you've brought with you? Is, is this a pet? Can it talk? And this should, sorry, if you know who she's referring to, that's fine. <laughs> I have with me Orion. He is my companion. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, Orion, it's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, uh, it, it, can it talk? That Many of the lions can talk. I, I'm not sure how... Uh, is it awakened or...? Uh, my elk here, he cannot speak. He was as a fawn, a gift to me from the Lady Artemis. Oh, is that so? How interesting. Well, if you would permit me, I can... And she just raises her hand, and you'll see an aura of green magic begin to swirl around her wrist, like a sort of stem of a flower begin to swirl, and like a convolvulus plant sort of wrap around. And she'll say, I can, if you like. And she'll point to the elk. Uh, perhaps later. Ah, so be it. Perhaps a silent companion is best. Some of the lions can be a bit chatty and a bit catty. <laughs> anyway, um, and this creature here, this horrible tusk thing, is this your 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 pet as well? He is my companion. He is I not see. a pet. And at this point, Shem is still on the ship, but is really worried about this gangplank breaking. So I'm like Fine. putting my foot on it for a second and listening for cracks and then leaning back and trying to see if it can hold all of my weight. Make a perception check. <laughs> okay. uh, perception. What do we got? What do we got? Uh, perception is seven. Can't quite tell. Could it could go either way? This. Ah, uh, yes. Um, you know, I can talk already. You don't need to do your little magic. I'm just a little more worried about uh, what I, I've heard called physics in Greece. Uh, <laughs> you see, if I hit the water, no one's getting me out. Um, I see. Uh, How dreadful. Uh, well, perhaps um, okay. I can organize I, an extra few boards put down, perhaps, with that... With that Put you at ease. Uh, wonderful. Yes, indeed. That would be excellent. Uh, <laughs> sorry Perhaps. for the inconvenience. Uh, Not at all. And um, we'll say that two, uh, what looked to be sort of summery, sort of um, hammer dryads. So things with like green skin and flower, um, leaves for hair, just um, sort of materialize from the bushes nearby as though a clapping sort of summoned them into existence. And they do go and fetch a couple more boards and place them on this gangplank. Seems steady Great. enough. Ah, of course, yes. <laughs> I look both ways and just like say a silent prayer to Zeus and step 
and step and start running down the plank to the bottom. <laughs> All right, sure, yeah. It's sort of, uh, you come off it in the same way as somebody running on an escalator does. So, like, you know, you come off it a bit more breeze. You almost go off the other side of the dock even, but you don't actually stop yourself. Uh, Cersei sort of steps back a little and uh, pulls the cubs with her a bit, but uh, she's just watching. <laughs> I'm glad to see such excitement for visiting AEA. Oh, well, it is a uh, great excitement, of course. It's what we're here for. Aha. Indeed, indeed. <sighs> Sort of take my snout or my trunk and wipe off my brow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, and it'll turn to Violetta and Rainier and um, we'll say, and you too, uh, from where do you hail? Is it from Greece or? But of course. Well, welcome. I don't suppose you've ever heard of me. My name is Circe. I've, I've ruled over this island for some time. We've heard many tales of Circe. <laughs> All good, I hope. <laughs> Uh, there was something in the past about turning somebody into a pig, but I, 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 I it's all conjecture. It didn't quite happen like that. Um, I may have deserved it. I'm, exactly. Well, I'm not saying it did happen, but if it did happen, they certainly deserved it. <laughs> and this oh, man, I assume to be the famed Ovid. I am, in all my heart, looking forward to what you will put into words of what you make of my island. Please, um... Please come down. And, and this, and he'll over just look over to you and say, This is my slave Grumio. If you can find some gruel, it will keep him sated for the time being. Well, um, <laughs> Ovid, we did bring our own, if you recall. Did yes, it was, I, that's the good gruel. I was, if they have any satiable gruel here, we, you can eat that, or some oats, or grass. I could, yeah. <laughs> um, but Grumio, head slave and uh, cook for Ovid. Ah, oh, right. And you cook for Ovid. I didn't realize. So you probably. I am the cook. That's true. You did say you're the cook. You say, <laughs> yes, Grumio is excellent. Um, preparing meats and fine fruits and vegetables. Perhaps you rival whatever you have here prepared for us. Where, where should we. And um, with a social, this sort of arc hand in a grand fashion down the um, sort of marble bridge which makes up the dock and say, you'll find a symposium that welcomes guests, the first stop on your journey. Um, if you head there, you're one of the final ships to arrive. So I assume the lovely couple will soon make themselves known. And um, well, I hope you enjoy it. Plenty of wine and foods to be had and be careful with interacting with some of our stranger guests. I've been told our sensibilities are quite dangerous to mortals, but do trust me when I say that everything's in good fun and it's not a God's festival unless a few people die, so pay them no mind. And um, she'll step back and the trireme immediately sort of sets off with a sort of like almost a instant thrust. And with that, it sort of makes its way off to the side where several triremes have um, sort of laid anchor and another one comes up behind you and it begins to set up the gangplank. But she seems more occupied with welcoming them as Ovid says, very well, it's this way, everybody. This not waste time. Ovid, why is it that everyone that we speak to speaks of our death? It's just like you treat mortals, you're like, oh, that person can die. I can't. Ha ha. Is this the joke for everyone or? I would imagine death is quite the phenomenon to an immortal. Maybe they don't understand it or don't realize it's serious. It's... Uh, perhaps they seem to want to test it out. I hope we are not part of the... Uh... The lab rats. Uh, Worry not, Shem. You are safe with me. If, if they require a death, I always have Grumio here. Isn't that right, Grumio? Uh, yes, of course, Master. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Willing to thrust himself upon a sword, this one. A real trustworthy slave. And, um, he'll be leading you all to um, down some marble paths and things into an island proper which is sort of um, a small island, but densely populated with structures of impeccable design. And you get the sort of sense that perhaps this is what Olympus may look like in its sort of ways of the, the pearlescent temples are all polished and the white stone of it is as good as it was when they were first erected. And the statues are more lifelike than any you've ever seen in mainland Greece or Rome or wherever you're from. Mm. Um, you finally come to what was previously mentioned, a symposium, which for those who aren't aware, is just a sort of party building type thing, or like a place where people get together to drink wine, enjoy wine, food, song, women, the things ancient Greeks sort of love to sort of, you know, um, have a bacchanal about and things. But uh, it is currently completely occupied by satyrs and nymphs then. 
who seems to have got there ahead of you and uh, taken up almost every seat. There is one table in the back that seems unoccupied, but it is in the very back and surrounded by rambunctious satyr and fawn and nymph-laden tables. Ah, that one must be for us. Uh, I start looking up to see if there's like a, you know, heavy thing hanging over it, like they're going to kill us all at any moment or any like any weird traps. Uh, make a perception <laughs> check, I guess, <laughs> if you are looking for something like that. You're obsessed with our deaths. <laughs> uh that is a total of four man i'm so perceptive there's no trap that has been set over the table that you can see <sighs> okay good uh grumio will, will taste the food for us of course so we'll find there and uh everyone else i guess will just block all the incoming blades and arrows when they when they come about that is my speciality though i think you worry a bit too much they do not want to actively kill us, I, I don't believe. It's not the perception I'm getting so far, but I'm not very good at perception, clearly, so... Uh. Perhaps death is just interesting to them, because they can't do it. I, I suppose it'll be fine, no matter what. They wouldn't have invited us if they wanted us dead, right? Uh, I can't say that for sure, but uh, you know, it is sort of a trick. We can all do it, just... Only once. <laughs> <laughs> the final trick. <laughs> hey, guys, watch this. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, maybe it's best we grab that table before it gets filled up by these satyrs. Very good. Uh, Ovid, is this suitable here? Yes, as long as I can see what's going on, I have a good idea, make some notes, that type of thing. Great, okay. I uh, do not see any of the chairs that will fit me, but all of you can, you know, have your pick. I will look for something special. <laughs> I start looking around for some giant seats that might actually fit me. Sure, yeah. They're all several benches, so it's just a question of if you can fit yourself onto a bench, which I'd say you might be able to do quite easily. And once you get to this table and sit down, the, the bowls on the table that are initially empty just begin to fill with fruit as though it just sort of coalesces from the air and wine begins to fill the cups as you take a seat. I will never not be impressed by magic. <laughs> Ovid, take a seat next to me. Uh, if you say so, and he'll just sort of work his way over to the table and sit down. Now, how did they do this? Could it possibly be as good as something made by hand? <sighs> Bite one of the apples. You bite one, and they're all a constitution saving throw. Well, uh, sorry, wisdom saving throw. <laughs> 20. That's pretty good. Yeah, it tastes great, actually. There you go. Um, one of the apples, it's very juicy, it's very moist, it's almost like spills over with um, juice once you bite into it. Well, it's <laughs> fresh at the least. Oh, you see? But I bet I try something then too. And he'll reach over and he'll grab something and he'll try, uh, we'll say, a sort of honey date. Um, he rolls a two. He says, oh, This is the best fruit I've ever eaten in my life. <laughs> what are you talking about, Groomy? I thought you had an excellent palate. This is amazing. This is truly just the nectar of the gods. And he'll just continue eating the food. And you look around to each of you, not eating, and it's like, there's plenty here for all of us. Uh, yes, of course. Well, I take up uh, one of the wine glasses and I'll start drinking a bit there. I'm going to see if, uh, does Ovid have an all right view from where he's at right now, or should I be worried about that? Uh, you know, he'll sort of, you'll see Ovid sort of um, craning his neck up. He's not got the perfect view. But there is a dais in the symposium, this sort of laid out, sort of half outdoor, half indoor area. The dais upon it has um, two vacant, what look like thrones. So you would assume from the purpose you're here for that these thrones are the thing that are the spectacle. So he has no trouble viewing those. Excuse me. But so he seems to have a decent enough view, yeah. Are we dressed well enough for the affair? I, I, uh, I do know that the, the goat men are naked, but I don't, you know, <laughs> sort of look down at myself. Don't want to be too revealing. <laughs> uh, uh, look at that one over there, Shem. And he'll point out a single sailor that is wearing a pair of pants on his head. And they'll say, I'm pretty sure we're safe dressed for the occasion. Ah, good, 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 good. Uh, uh -huh. mm. It's kind of interesting to be the elephant in the room. 
Uh, oh, please. Had <laughs> <laughs> that joke for a while. All right. Right. <laughs> Just reached down and crossed that off the elephant punch mm-hmm. for the evening. Um, <laughs> can't wait till you say about never forgetting something. Yeah, <laughs> I can't well, wait. Coming, don't you worry. Yeah, until I, I see a mouse. I will count the seconds <laughs> until it comes. But um, who, Is anyone here like not eating the food is everyone eating or what well, i just want to know who like, st- i'm pretending to eat but i'm not actually eating all right sure but thing. Even is not eating the food all right I'm sure eating. i'm eating, eating very heavily but i'm not eating all right so so you see not eating bell i guess yes yeah i'm drinking heavily but not eating all right so you're still need to roll a wisdom save for the drink as well and um what about uh violetta absolutely eating all right digging into the grapes go ahead for the wisdom save then yeah, yeah Belagos. That's 21. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. It tastes great. As they say, the wine is perfect. It's not too um, not too aggressive. It's really nice on the palate, and you can drink it like juice, pretty much. And uh, yeah. Um, four. A four. Yeah, okay. Um, you, however, it tastes not just great to you, Violetta. It, it's, as Obed said, it tastes like the best food you've ever had. This is incredible. I... The gods are... Oh, I must come here more often. Well, it's not that great, really. Yeah, my cooking's not that bad. You don't have to rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have what she's having. Oh, come on, Zach. <sighs> God, I'm going to start out. giving you disadvantages <laughs> and rolls. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I'll save you later. Not only is it the best thing you have, you've got a sudden urge. As you say, you have to come in more often. You get a sudden urge that you might want to stay here for some time. <sighs> This is, I, oh, I wonder how long we can stay. Uh, perhaps a few days, weeks, months. Uh, I, I'm in agreement with the that perhaps it's possible to extend our stay uh, for a short excursion, shall we say, a year, perhaps. Uh, I want to make sure I get to know the island in its entirety, you see. So of stay course, of it. Yes, <laughs> you're very wise to suggest mm-hmm. this. We stay for perhaps a year, a year and a half, perhaps, and well, then we will decide if we want to leave or not. Oh, but just re- remember, you have publication deadlines. Ah, uh, publication, smabrication. I can publish those from here with, uh, with ravens and uh, send my works back to Rome, but uh, nothing to worry about, uh, Grumio. All handled. Uh, you stay here, too, for a, a year, two years, perhaps. Uh, so Mr. long as Audrey. I don't get bored. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a joke. I, I, I'm bidding to you. <laughs> <laughs> Slave humor. <laughs> All right, so go ahead. Um, is it, I think, Rainier trying to speak to him? Or? Master Ovid, we've not been invited to stay. Perhaps we should wait until we see how the festival goes before we make long-term plans. I suppose if you want to be... Very safe, we could perhaps see if the festival pans out and then talk about staying, but I do want to stay for at least for at least a week. We shall stay as long as you wish, and as long as we are welcome. <laughs> sounds fair, sounds fair. Um, so, in the sort of frenzy of the satyrs that are as rambunctious eaters as they are drinkers and dancers, uh, rather throwing through food rather than eating it, but then eating it at the same time. Um, just basically, there's a single table in all these that is uh, completely um, absent of all sorts of jovial, like um, joy and humor and singing. And you'll see three, uh, what look to be humans sitting there, um, all sort of eating the food with a bit more grace and a bit more delicacy. Um, and they have the same sort of um, uh, magnanimous aura that Dionysus had, uh, but of different separate colors and things. As they uh, they look for each other and they lean in in close conversation, but um, it's all interrupted um, very quickly. As it, it seems that the symposium is becoming full, as the, the more satyrs that arrived in the nymphs and the oceanids and the hamadryads and all these sort of strange nymphs of the ancient world make their way into the symposium, apparently coming from the ship that arrived after you. Um, there is a single um, nymph of sort of, again, leafy hair and things and green skin that uh, stands up on the dais and casts both his hands across the, uh, the crowd. And he seems to speak with a certain touch of his throat over everybody else. And he simply says, it is truly a day of great humility and reunification. 
from the lowliest mortal porpoise, and he'll gesture towards your table, um, and he'll say, to the high Olympians, and he'll gesture over to the table of the three that you saw. He says, there is none of us that is a stranger to the power of love, and the goddess of beauty herself, Aphrodite, having waited half a year, is reunited with her paramour, Adonis. Ladies and gentlemen, nymphs, satyrs, mortals, and all those in between, I present to you the lovers that we all ascribe to be. And he'll just st- uh, take a step down. Um, stepping up from the back of the dais um, seems to be a man um, of strange description. He's got sem- uh, at the same time, he's got sort of a boyish charm, but at the- with that, he's got sort of a ruggedness that gives him a serious sort of squinting gaze over the crowd. But he is undeniably a creature of great beauty. It seems to be just a simple man. He wears just a very simple toga, just plain white, as he just holds out his hand. And from the right of him comes a woman sort of of red hair and um, sort of pink robes that seem to be wrapped around us, like in a sort of curtain-esque way rather than robes. And she sort of takes his hand and they both sit down at the... Um, top of the dais and cast their eyes across the crowd. And you'd know this to be both Adonis and Aphrodite sitting at the top of the dais. And Ovid immediately starts scribbling notes and like sketches of these two. We are quite lucky to be in the presence of such powerful gods. Such beauty, even. Indeed. Whoa, why? My, 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 my. <laughs> Tis true. Just a shame, you know. What is a shame? Uh, no, no. Perhaps here's not best, but, uh, well, you know, the things with the gods and all. Uh, you, uh, you speak in riddles, Belagost. What is this? Uh, my heart lies truly with the forge, my friend, if you understand. Ah, indeed. I do not believe that would be someone here. Uh, I do not know Hephaestus to be very social of a of a god. Hmm. Mm. Nobody will. Um, he'll say, "Yes, Hephaestus is a complex relationship with Aphrodite, and uh, being that this is a place with a paramour Adonis, I, I don't expect Belagos to be as fortunate as to meet your god here." Mm. I should imagine not. I just uh, have a bit of trouble watching us all. Very well. Uh, you can look over there if you like, and just points to a wall behind the table. <laughs> and he, he will. He'll, he'll, he'll turn himself right around. <laughs> it's stare at a wall. Just don't make it obvious. That might be a, a, an offense or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Adonis and Aphrodite oh, cast their God. eyes over the, <laughs> the huge crowd of faces all beaming up at them. And it's hard not to catch Jonas with just one head that's looking in the opposite direction <laughs> at a wall. And they see the back of this dwarf's head. And yeah, it is a bit unusual. Um, and Ovid still looks at this. Perhaps we should draw some eyes on the back of his head. And <laughs> he's bald, so they won't notice. <laughs> Master Ovid, I... I do think they would notice. Perhaps Belagos should at least, out of respect, turn around. Yes, you better go stop looking at that wall, you cretinous oaf. Look at gods and shit. <laughs> fine, then, fine, then. Make up your mind. Oh, <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> well, you pay proper respect to the gods. Of course, we are guests here. Uh, so we, oh. we should pay much respect. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Is Adonis also um, of the Olympian type, or uh, just lucky? <laughs> yeah, you can roll a religion check to see if you know that if you want. Sure. I doubt it. Yar. Uh, Thirteen. Uh, yeah, you require a bit of prompting from Ovid, because you say, "No, no, Adonis is um, is a funny story, really. Um, Aphrodite's." Uh, sent his mother mad with lust for the father and then she gave birth to adonis but she gave birth to adonis after aphrodite uh, turned her into a tree uh it's a very strange story but uh, it seems to have some truth in it maybe allegory i'm not sure but needless to say uh, he seems to be in good health now 
my my of it this is it's quite interesting to me how would anyone know these things without you writing it down without you telling everyone about this uh, the tale of adonis is a very old tale but uh i i imagine they want a true poet to record it in artistic style sure i just it's Interesting that for the mortals to know to respect the gods, the gods have to tell the mortals to respect them, and someone has to write it down and tell people to do it, and I don't know, it becomes somewhat cyclical, don't you think? Maybe you are the most powerful person. Maybe you are the most powerful person in the world. <laughs> it's like, the gods are nothing if not cyclical. Uh, shame, you should know this. They are beings of hypocrisy, beings of lust and insatiable. Uh, 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 bring, the, bring the voice down just when you. No, please. I need to say this, and you'll just say, <laughs> hear the slurring of his wines and say, Oh, no. The gods, <laughs> they are always contradicting themselves. I, I heard often, this. Often making love to the same person that they were dead the day next. It's sure. Oh, it's very crazy. Um, over, uh, over its uh, mouth. Yeah. None of them are more guilty than Aphrodite. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to wear the trunk up and make a big noise to cover this. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Your trunk and um, Violet's hand over his mouth do manage to stop over before he gets on his feet and gets on the table and just <laughs> soapboxing about how terrible gods are in the presence of five of them. Perhaps um, not the best time of it. Perhaps we should not insult our hosts. Here, ha- have another dope. <laughs> yeah, he'll take, he'll take that, yeah. <laughs> um... But yeah, um, the same nymph that um, announced them to begin with said, well now part the way between the satyrs and to say, silence, silence, all of you. It is time that you all pay proper respects to Aphrodite and Adonis. And then he'll continue saying, um, how to say sort of, residency or time spent on this island is not from the pure goodness of Cersei's heart. All of you are expected to bring gifts for this most illustrious of couples. And I will let you present them now for Aphrodite's blessing. And um, he'll step aside and um, several people, or many of the satyrs, will begin presenting plates of fruit and things and strange things that they've made or little trinkets that they found. And um, But what's your party doing at the table? I suppose Artemisia. we should present our gift. Mm. Gifts. Uh, yes, yes, she presents our gifts. And um, Ovid will be the first to join the queue of satyrs, which is quite unorganized, but it seems like it's at least getting something done. Oh, no. Get behind uh, him. Yeah, Rania, please, he listens to you. Get behind him before he runs his mouth again. I'll <laughs> do my best. <laughs> uh, Grumio, I, I know as a your position, you don't have much to offer. Do you need uh, some gift to give or...? Well, um, uh, Ovid had me uh, prepare a course for uh, the gods. Uh, hopefully it lives up to the test, but I will be right back. And Groom is going to run off to the ship and go uh, fetch oh. his, his pot. Sure, yeah, I'll allow you to do that. The ship is like currently in harbor, not in uh, in Bay Rabbit, not in, not in the docks, but I'll allow you to do that. That's, that's fair. Um, you managed to you know, go find your way back to the ship and get your, your pots and your pans and all that time and stuff. Is that your after, yeah? All right, cool. Yeah, and you make your way back to the party just in time for, um, we'll say, I say Shem, you probably get into the queue first. So with Ovid straight behind you. So which, um, Aphrodite sort of leans forward. She's seen you in the queue a good five people back. And it's obvious that she's been eager to get through these five people and see what this strange, unusual and exotic creature could possibly present as a gift. And she just leans in and she whisk- leans over sort of on her arm, on the arm of the throne and whispers something to Wanderdonis, who gets a sort of chuckling laugh as he looks down at you. Both of them have an almost pervasive beauty about them, as though it's an uncomfortable perfection in their visage, which just rather is off-putting rather than attractive in just how perfect it is. But both eyes, uh, both sets of eyes stare down at you with um, picturesque sort of, uh, vis- uh, picturesque sort of complexion. So they sit there expectantly, but like the others, they do not say anything. They simply wait. Ah, ah, your graces, I am uh, Shim Crystal from Carthage, what now known perhaps as other names across the sea. I come from a long distance and I, well, I, I do not, ah, you are so beautiful. I do not know what to give mm. except all of myself. And so if you will bear with me, I will give you the thing most dear to me that I know. 
And at this point, I will kind of take my um, sort of cloven hands and wrap a big circle in the air and start to just inscribe a dimension door in front of me. Okay. And then I say, these are for you. And I stick my body through, but I leave my tusks hanging out. And then I close the dimension door and they just slice the tusks off. And the tusks <laughs> fall. Wow. <laughs> as I appear about five feet back wow. on my knee, writhing in pain. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Oh. You got them. Oh, okay. Ah, oh. do you like them? Two extremely clean cuts on your tusks are all that's left as you lean back. And the dimension door just clatters be, um, between them, two chunks of hefty, heavy ivory, uh, which sort of just hits the ground with a heavy thud and no bounce, the same way ivory might. And Aphrodite simply looks over and Adonis is the same. And Adonis will reach down and pick one up. Uh, and he'll just sort of smirk and reach over to Aphrodite. He gives another chuckle to whatever it is he says. And she sort of bats him off like the way a couple would. And um, they both look down at you. And um, Aphrodite, rather than any of the gifts so far, she'll just give a simple nod. Oh, I nod back to you. I, I Your voice, I'm sure, is as pretty as your, your visage. Uh, I will... I hope that they serve. Uh, bye bye. And then I'll just say, <laughs> ow, 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 ow. You, you feel about, you know, six pounds lighter as yeah. you like, what, yeah. like, come away from this. I just part. go find a bowl of wine and just start chugging and reaching yeah, out sure. my little stubs of tusks now. Sure. Okay. Um, so Ovid's next, and Ovid will come to the forefront and they'll say, I give you Aphrodite and Adonis as a poet. I give you the gift of song. And then he'll just take a deep breath and he'll start just singing off some terrible tune that's out of key. Obviously, his styles are more prepared for paper rather than in the actual practice. So he'll say, the gods of Aphrodite, beauty personified through the ages of man. And with man comes great power who worships Aphrodite. And Adonis with her in the underworld, but not her. And it's not long before a satyr just comes along and um, puts a hand on his shoulder and shakes his head. And Aphrodite <laughs> just sort of um, gives another shake of her head. Nova just opens his eyes and says, Hey, is my turn finished? Very well. I will just step over here. And uh, he will just leave and give way for the next person. So um, who's after Ovid? That was me. Oh, no. Oh, right. uh, we'll go with, say, uh, go ahead, Rainy, and then we'll go to um, Violetta as well. Okay. Adonis Aphrodite, the honor is mine. I've brought with me a fine wolf pelt that I hunted myself. Mm. This will get Adonis' attention more, and um, he'll even stand up, and instead of uh, with all the other gifts, he'll descend, and um, he'll hold out his hands for the wolf pelt from you. This man is somewhat sort of almost seven foot tall, and he's got a sort of the physique you'd expect from a sort of um, statue maker to ascribe to the gods. This holds out his hand to it. Uh, offer it up. And he'll basically lift it to the sun and look at it and inspect how it's been tanned and prepared. And um, he'll actually finally speak to you first, Ray, and you and say, hey, Tell me, did you prepare this yourself? I did. It is a fine feat. I am somewhat the hunter myself. Perhaps... Later today, you will join me for the great hunt. We'll be hunting boar as part of the festivities. It would be my honor. Well, I shall see you in the forest then. Your name? Rania. Rania. Very well, and he'll hold out his hand to give it sort of a shake. I just give it a little. Yeah. Um, make a perception check, R Rania. Um. So used to rolling real dice. Let me do it. Uh, I'm going to try this thing. There. Work. Okay, that worked. Yeah, definitely. Um, what did you get? 26. That's very good. And crit roll, nice one. Um, so yeah, past um, Adonis, you'll see um, Aphrodite in a throne sort of staring at you, but not in the same comforted, relaxed and smug gaze she had before. Her eyes are arched and her brow is furrowed. And she's got this sort of pinch in her nose as she just looks like fiery with rage at you as you uh, take Adonis's hand and hand this gift to him personally. Um, it's just like a sudden black cloud has descended over Aphrodite's gaze and you get the intense feel of the 
the tarnished side of love rather than the joyous side, the side of penetrative jealousy that sort of invades you as Aphrodite stares down at you, stares through you. I like over hand immediately. Yeah, and Adonis will turn and he'll resume his place on the throne. And Aphrodite will just look over to him with a bit of a, a same scowl and then look back to the next person to come along, which is um, Violetta. I'll uh, place my pack down beside me and take a knee and remove both of my gloves, which reveal uh, both of my hands are calloused and uh, have cuts all across them. And I'll say, for the, beautif- the most beautiful couple, in all of existence, I figured only the best, the most beautiful gift in return. And I opened my pack and inside there's about a one and a half foot tall, uh, solid gold uh, figure of both the likeness of Adonis and Aphrodite embracing. Oh, right, okay. Sure, um, Aphrodite will just sort of clap hands together with, and sort of um, cradle her chin in them as she looks at this um, caricature of both of them um, embracing, and the uh, the figures are immediately recognisable as Adonis and Aphrodite. And if not, it's piecable together by the um, context of the situation. Um, and, and Aphrodite will um, look down at them, and she'll again give the single nod that she gave to um, Shem as she points towards the pile. And nod my head. Perhaps the gifts of the mortals are not as well crafted, but it is the best we have to offer. And now move toward the pile. She will share some words with Adonis, again leaning over, and both of them leaning back with the same sort of smug, um, godlike sort of titter and giggle that they have, uh, which leaves either Artemisia or Grumio to go next. So which one would like to go next there? Uh, Artemisia will walk forward with her elk Orion. My lord and my lady, I present to you this gift. I caught these myself as well as I crafted the cage myself with my own two hands. And she will take this big bird cage off of the elk horn and present it up. And it is this bird cage made out of willow wood, polished to shine as bright as gold, adorned with six pearls on the very top. And the base is carved with six roses all the way around. And inside are two of the purest white doves that she could possibly get. All right. Lovely. Yeah. And she'll, uh, this will more take Adonis's attention as well. Anything to do with being able to animals and, you know, finding animals and hunting animals and capturing animals and cages. It's more his purview. And he'll sort of lean forward in his chair, but he won't raise from it this time. Already being scorned for leaving it the first time. <laughs> And he'll um, say, oh, truly magnificent, a beautiful creature. Please leave it down there. I I will look forward to seeing you also at the hunt later today. I would be most honored. I wish to do you proud as well as my goddess. Your goddess? Who is it? Is it Aphrodite? (laughs) Of course it is, but it is also the Lady Artemis as well. Oh, well. It may pleasure you to hear is that Artemis shall also be joining us in the hunt later. I would be most delighted to serve you both. Ah, well, we look forward to it as well, I'm sure. And um, with that, we'll go to, um, is it Grumio as the last person attending this sort of gift-giving ceremony? Uh, One of the last, yes. Grumio kind of has this carded large iron pot and it's got a uh, cork lid on it. He kind of wheels it forward. Um, and he's also carrying this uh, this uh, wooden board with a, an assortment of foods along it. Uh, <clears throat> gods. Uh, another gift from Ovid. Uh, he had me spare no expense in creating uh, the best meal uh, any mortal, uh, at least my mortal self, could hope to offer. Um, we have a, a seafood medley, and he'll pop the lid, and a, a bit of steam will uh, pop out. Uh, fish and... and prawn and other crustaceans caught from all over the seas uh, that we have access to. Um, it may not look it, but it is very delicious. And he'll put the lid back on, keep it hot. And uh, a cartruderie board of uh, all the finest meats and crackers we can make. And um, the two of them will look at each other and just give a bit of a laugh. Um, and they sort of wave their hands at the gift like um, it's not of interest to them, unfortunately. <laughs> Oh, no. Very good. Uh, Grumio will cart it off to the side. As you approach to the side, Ovid will look at you, Grumio. You, you gave them food, did you? 
Well, that's what I do. Yes, very <laughs> so, Grimio. We need to have some very stern words once we get back on the ship. <laughs> my, my apologies, Master. No, don't bother with it, Grimio. It's already too late for that. <laughs> we'll, we'll soon see, but mm, maybe they'll like it when they try it. But if you try the food here, it's exceptional. I, 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 I'm aware. I, I tasted it myself. Uh, mine is exceptional, too, I, I assure you. Uh, it's all right. <laughs> and then he'll just sort of be um, the obnoxious slave owner that he is, as well as uh, to you, Grumio. <laughs> um, but yeah, sorry, Delagos, that leaves you as well at the back of the queue. Sort of out of sight of everyone else being a dwarf, but what is it that you brought to present? Yes, I, I'll walk forward and uh, kind of look up at the two great gigantic figures ahead of me. Uh, hey, my lord and my lady, uh, I have brought uh, with me uh, something of my own craft. Uh, he pulls out a small ring. It's made of pure amber. It's been carved to appear as a rosebud about to bloom. And it's been faceted in such a way that when the light catches it, it almost seems to glow with an inner fire. I don't know if it's a match for the craftsmanship up here, but uh, perhaps it can hold a small flame to it. Mm. She'll um, look to Adonis, Aphrodite will look to Adonis, who uh, will some sort of receive some unspoken message, and he'll rise from his throne, and he'll come in and sort of lay his hand out with a flat palm as though to receive the ring. I very delicately set it in his hand. Uh, uh, I do hope it is to your liking. Uh, don't worry, my friend. She may seem a bit cold-hearted, but I assure you she likes the ring. And uh, he'll step up back the, the stairs and he'll just um, slip it onto Aphrodite's outstretched hand, which is just presenting one finger more than others as it just sort of sinks onto her hand and she just brings it back and looks at it. She doesn't give you any response, but the fact that she's looking at the ring alone tells you something at least. Yeah, uh, I take a very deep bow. Uh, thank you for your gracious uh, hosts and uh, uh, goodbye. And I quickly head back over to where everybody else is. <laughs> sure. Um, so the bots followed behind you with several sailors and nymphs. Again, with much more simple gifts that there was expected of these people that don't give as much value in gift giving as the mortals do. It's generally just a half eaten apple that one's got off the table, um, all sorts of stuff that basically is just riffraff that um, Aphrodite and Donis just pass through as much as they can. Um, but yeah, as this has happened, there's the satyrs sort of make their way out of the symposium, uh, being directed by the nymphs of the island to what should be the next stage of the um, the event, the big fun festivals to be going on, which is, as Adonis spoke of, um, the hunt to be had, um, which is a hunting of a boar on the island. Um, the gods themselves, which you know now to be um, Artemis, Ares, and Apollo, uh, follow on to the hunting area. Um, basically, all of them look similar, um, humans at the very least, uh, but all with sort of ominous um, coloured glows about their auras, which follow them as like a wispy smoke wherever they move. Um, and they carry themselves with the authority and grace that one could only ascribe to a god, really. Um, Aphrodite and Adonis for themselves make them way down from the dais until only um, a few satyrs and nymphs remain, uh, as well as the person directing everybody. But once this person directing everybody goes over to these satyrs and nymphs, all that they're greeted with is wine thrown over them and food thrown at them and even them pushing this person away um, until they come over to you as well. And the person will approach Ovid and say, ah, Apologies, they're quite a rambunctious, these satyrs, and I will be in very much trouble if uh, they do not move on to the next point of call, the hunt. Uh, uh, would, are you happy to move ahead yourselves? Yes, of course. Well, I'm sure we can figure it out. That is good to hear. Uh, do you look like quite a worthy bunch? Perhaps you could help me speak with these satyrs and the nymphs over here. Perhaps you can convince them to go ahead with you. If they stay here, then I would be in very much trouble. We can, we will try. All right, sure. And uh, what you're basically seeing ahead of you now is several empty tables with um, cups on the ground, food being thrown, but the symposium's empty other than these like final people at the bar that refuse to leave effectively. Uh, but it is to what looks to be um, a sort of spring-like nymph and a summer nymph. 
and also a few satyrs around them as well, all drinking wine together and just um, pushing away this person who's trying to guide them away every time he comes over. Uh, Artem- sh- go ahead. Oh, uh, Artemis will walk over to them and attempt to talk to them. Sure thing. As you get closer, uh, a few of them turn their heads to look at you, but they're more focused on the drink and the food in front of them and the songs that they're singing. Uh, as you get closer to them, they'll just wave you towards the exit with the uh, with the others. Uh, Shem is going to take a gust cantrip and knock the cup out of the satyr's hand. All right. Okay. One of the satyrs, sure. Definitely can do that. No roll required. As the satyr's uh, hand is suddenly the full cup, uh, bowl of wine that he had he was sipping from just flies over his face, covering him in wine and over the back of his horns and smashing on a table behind him. And he stands up and points at you, Shem, and says, You! You owe me wine I for this mean, magic trick of yours. <laughs> I do believe my lady asked you to leave, and I think that you should be doing this now. Ah, it is a festival. We can stay as long as we want. You should leave and go back to wherever it is that elephants can walk on two feet and talk like a man. <laughs> and this coming from the goat that walks on two feet and talks like a man. Half a goat, half a goat, not a full goat. And um, he'll uh, just look very annoyed, very exceptionally angry with you, given the <laughs> lack of wine, as he tries to take some from his friends, but um, they're not having it. Um, as he just tries to rally them all, and eventually the nymphs will get involved as well, as they stand up from their wines and look over to you, the party, and they'll, one of them will step forward, a sort of uh, orange-skinned, uh, an orange-haired um, figure, just sort of with a bit more grace and tact, approaches the party and says, now, please. As mortals, I understand that you're not the smartest of people and you have very limited lives to understand how things work around here, but best be seeing yourselves off before any one of you gets hurt. I do believe you are being rather rude. Perhaps you are the ones that should leave. Is that so? Come now, we can all come together on this uh, quite easily. Uh, Matter of fact, I think I have a solution that might make us all happy. Now, you being uh, uh, greater than us mortals, of course, greater of than course. we aspire to, I'm uh, thinking to myself, well, you could surely drink all that you could here, right? Well, whatever's left, of course. Magic seems to have weared off from these cups. But, well then, I propose a simple test. If I could uh, drink along with my companions more of what's left than what you can, uh, you'll get up and head out to the hunt as you ought to, and we'll follow along as we ought to. You first, of course. Hmm. Sounds like a quite a fun challenge, actually. Uh, <laughs> we shall soon see, shall we? Uh, do join us over at this table here. And um, as you're going over, over it'll lean to you, Grumio, and I'll say, if you can get them to leave, it may make up for that catastrophic mistake you just made, Grumio, sir. All right, I'll go drink my heart out. Don't worry, David. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) And um, the the, um, creature, this sort of nymph-like creature that's emanating a, a heat, a warmth from it that's similar to the warm summer sun, takes a seat on the same table that he came from, and he shoes away one of the satyrs on the other side. He begins pouring two cups of wine. And he summons you over, Belagost. Come, come, sit. We'll soon see if you are capable. And I'll trudge over and take a seat opposite and grab up the cup. Hmm. You look stout. Maybe you can handle your drink, yes? Aye, that I can. Yes. At least I don't plan to lose to the likes of you. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Immortal, toying with me, I will allow it, if not only for the novelty of communicating with a species so low to the earth. And he'll knock back his wine, and um, he'll knock back his wine, and he'll roll a constitution check to see how well he can do it. A nine's a failure, as he sort of coughs down as he tries to down a whole uh, cup of wine, a whole bowl of wine, or splutter a bit over the top of it, and he'll just put it down on the table, and he'll look over to you and says, "This is this wine is rotten. Fetch me a proper proper wine." Uh, 
We'll see how rotten the wine is. And I tip back my bowl. All right, sure. Go ahead and roll me a constitution check. See how well you can down a bottle, a whole thing of wine. <laughs> That's going to be a 22. All right, yeah, that is, a, <laughs> that is definitely a success. But it's not over. As, it's, as was agreed, um, another bowl of wine is brought to the creature ahead of you. And he says, he just gives it a smell first and says, ah, yes, this is proper wine. You can obviously drink swill very easily. I have a more refined palate. And he'll just tip this wine back up and he'll roll another con check to see if he can down this one. A 10, which is just a success. You can see him struggling. He even takes a, a small to stare, sort of tip away to take a breath, but he eventually does get it down his stomach there. And um, that is a success for him. So he just puts it down on the table and says, yes, I much take easier to proper wine. Something you may have difficulty understanding. Please, your turn. Oh, tis true, tis true. Perhaps the mortal's brew is not quite as flavorful as you're used to, but I'd wager it's twice as strong, and I'd drown it again. All right, go ahead and roll a con saving throw. An eight, that's a failure. Oh, that's a nat one, actually. <laughs> it's a nat one, yeah. So you're just choking this stuff up, unfortunately. In fact, you tell me, Belgius, how does it look with a nat one when you try to down this wine? So I tilt the wine back, <coughs> and I keep tilting, and I keep tilting, and then I fall clean out of it, unconscious <laughs> on the ground. Oh, right, okay. So you're actually unconscious now <laughs> for failing the whole thing. There was one more round left, which might have been the tiebreaker. But yeah, given that you are incapable, I'm going to put you here and um, effectively asleep <laughs> on the ground. Um, but yeah, with that, noticing that they've got one of you, um, one of this sort of people that would be so daring to um, question their fun time, knocked out completely. The um, nymph across the table will let himself up from the table and um, he'll rally the satyrs together, all uh, the ones that are there, and he'll point to the party that's remaining other than Belagost and say, Perhaps it's best we teach these a lesson. What it means to question those who are immortal rather than mortal. All right, let's not get ahead of ourselves now. We uh, immortals certainly have something to offer. And uh, Belagos, he's proud of himself, but he's not the best drinker here. Roll, I a, draw my glaive. roll, roll a persuasion check, groom. Yeah. All right. Let's see how this works for you. Oh, Oof, another natural one for yeah. total four. And um, the Elijah will look to the sage and say, kill that one first. Oh, gosh. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, with that, we'll roll uh, We'll roll some initiative. Uh, let me put you guys on this. And just tell me if you can't see, and I'll instantly fix it. Can't, can't see. see. All right, okay. Uh, one by one, who we got? I can see, so not. Okay, good. who can't see? Grumio cannot. Violetta okay. cannot. All right, just a second. Uh, I can see nothing, but I'm unconscious, so. All ah, right, very well. No matter how much time, and I spent the 30 minutes making sure everyone could see, roll 20 is just like, nah, you know, nah, just, just no. Just I can't, can't see either. Her. Always yeah. the best. Let me, uh, does this help if I take this off? Can everyone see now? No. no. Ah, right, this is going to take some uh, time, which is really, really annoying. But here we go. Okay. Um, Grumio, you don't have a character sheet attached to you, I don't think. So um, Nico's character would be it. So that to Nico's character. Can you see now? Mm, nope, not yet. Okay, that's good. That's fun. Um, right. So... Please pardon our technical difficulties. Yeah, it's roll 20 <laughs> is just the most painful thing in the world. Uh, can you see now, Nico? I see my token, but I can't control it. Okay. Can you see the map? Nope. Uh, <laughs> so it's so hard. Right. Okay. So now let's do this. That. I'm just. Oh, I could not see. I refreshed and now I can see. So. All oh, right. Do you want to try that okay. too? Everybody who can't see, do you want to try that? Oh, roll 20. <laughs> Bane, of my ass. Bane of my existence, but also the thing I based my existence on. So, <laughs> ah. After refreshing, I can see. There it is. All right. Cool. I cannot control my token. All right, great. Well, people can see. Everyone can see. 
yeah. that's 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 progress. Great. And I I'm so happy that everyone can see. So that's all that I really care. About. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so uh, you should be able to control your token now, Violetta. Yes, I can. All right, sure. So uh, who we got for initiative? Violetta, you got all the one d twenty. You got nat twenty. Is there any modifier for that though? No. Nope. So I'll just add you at twenty. I have advantage, but. Uh... I don't need to use it. No, indeed not. Um, right, so uh, who else has got? We have Grumio with an 11. Okay, so I'm missing um, Bellagast and uh, Rainier and um, who else? Artemisia. Artemisia got a 7. Okay, That's sure. Rania. All right, so... <laughs> And, um, Who has the higher decks of Artemisia and Rania? Uh, let's see. Unless you want to, guys, just want to decide amongst yourselves who wants to go first. That's fine too. Her decks is a uh, fourteen plus two. All right. Seventeen plus three. Oh. Okay, sure. So that would mean that Rania goes first. But let me roll these things as well. It should be quite, a, hopefully, a hard fight for you. But we'll soon see. Um. Oh God. I, I had this set up like it's going to be dead fluid. I'll get straight into it. But here we are <laughs> <You know? laughs> trying to make roll 20 work. Right. Okay. Um, so 14 and 9 for them. And the satyrs. This. Right. So just one final check to make sure I've got everybody. I've got one, two, three, four five, six players and three NPCs, which is everything. Oh, it's not on the map, but he wouldn't take part in the combat anyway. He's an old man. So uh, with that, the, um, the combat begins and via that, you can see these things beginning to um, approach in a way that is non too friendly as the satyrs sort of draw out some swords and this thing that's directing them. Uh, this was the one talking with Bella Guest here. Um, it's pointing them straight towards Grumio and he's just said, kill that one first. Uh, finally, a chance to try out our skills against the Immortals. I'll draw my glaive and uh, begin to move in this direction. All right. Just so you guys know, Belagus is in the effects of a sleep, so he um, he can only act if someone wakes him up as an action. And I'll get to right here. Okay. No. And on the closest nymph, I will take a swing. All right. Sure thing. Go ahead and roll an attack with your uh, your glaive, did you say? Yes, this will be a great weapon master attack. Okay, sure thing. Uh, 16. 16, so you roll a 21, is that right? Yes. All right, sure, that is a miss, though, unfortunately. All right, and yeah. the second one will not be a great weapon master attack. Okay. Uh, natural 18, 25. That is a hit, yeah, sure thing. Fantastic news. <laughs> so that's 1d10. Uh, five plus four, nine points of slashing damage. The glaive. Right. That's very good. Yep. Um, it's magical, if that matters. It, it isn't magical. It is. So it is right. That make that does matter. I just assumed that people would go for magic weapons, but they're allowed magic items. I should check. Yeah. You're right. It All is. right. So does that end your turn? Uh, no. Then I will use my uh, polearm uh, master attack, which okay. is one d four plus built. something. Uh. 18 to hit. Uh, an 18 is a hit, yeah. All right, and that is a d4. Three plus four, eight, seven points. Seven damage, very nice. Yeah, this thing just gets clobbered by your glaive, um, and you'll see it sinking in, but it doesn't bleed red, but it bleeds dark green as you pull it out of the wounds you create. It just looks back at you with a sort of, even now with a joyful face, even while it's getting attacked. I'm glad you're enjoying. It will answer that on its turn. Um, it's now this creature's turn that's been causing you guys such a pain. Um, and he will step forward himself, and he, as he says, will go straight towards uh, Grumio. Just tell um, you like it. yeah, the uh, punching bag for the pie, it seems. Uh, he will use a face step to go straight to here without using movement, and then he will basically just disappear in a flash of sort of a solar flash. And he appears right next to you, and as he does, coming straight out, he will multi-attack with his long sword twice. So that's a 15 and a 19. They both hit. All right, here we go. This is going to be painful for you with your health. That <laughs> so. it is. All right, I'll use Uncanny Dodge on the second to reduce that damage in half. 
All right, sure. So that is um, rough, though. 17 plus uh, 4 is 21 plus 9 is uh, 30 plus 7 is 37. So how you yeah, looking? Yeah, and in one fell swoop, the slave falls. <laughs> All right. Oh, no. I can't believe you got 35 <laughs> HP. It's completely oh. insane. <laughs> All right. Uh, all right. So, um, Nico, would you like to roll a death saving throw? I'd be glad to. <laughs> would happen straight before your turn. Sorry. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Let's roll a d20. 12. One success. 12 is a success. Sure. So, Bella, guess I'll say you can roll a wisdom saving throw to try and wake up. I Sounds. think that's fair because it was effectively role play combat. So. Let's see if I wake up. A 16, I'll say, definitely do it. Yeah, so you can wake up, but you are prone, so you can only use half your movement speed. Oh! Eh. Yeah, I'm gonna stand up and see what's happening here. And I suppose I'm gonna scramble over the top of the table if I can. Yeah, that's uh, extra. Roll my uh, token there. You can't control your token? No, I'm okay. sorry. That's all right, let's just do it. There you go, should be able to now. Right, and I'll get about there, I think, or okay. actually probably a bit less than that at 10. But um, I'm going to take out a small ball of iron bands. And I'm going to hurl it over at uh, the uh, glowing one that's just taken down my companion. And as I do so, I'll speak the command word, seal. Okay, that's a... Um... Yeah, oh, sorry. Uh, that's hell of a description. Here's, yeah. Basically, he'll be restrained. I'll make a, an arranged attack. Let me try to push your dexterity modifier on a hit. Target is restrained until you take, your, until you take a bonus action to shoot the camera against a release it. Doing so, I'm missing an attack. Causes a mandatory creature, including the one restrained, can use an action to make a DC 20 strength check to break their own bands. That's all I need to know, really. So, yeah, sure. He is restrained. As he is wrapped around by these metal bands that immediately seem like they're not going to work on his sort of half corporeal form, but they do in fact restrain him after some time of sinking into his skin. And he just sort of shakes himself around and says, Gah! Foul mortal magics! And he is restrained. Excellent. Uh, with that, I'm going to say, uh, we should really put a stop to all this, don't you think? Or would you like to stay in there a while longer? That'll be the end of my turn. <laughs> all right. Shem, it's your turn. What would you like to do? Shem is going to rush up to these satyrs, and I'm going to make a booming blade attack with my staff. All right, sure, go ahead. A um, oh, that's the damage. Sorry, yeah, yeah, you've got to roll the eyes. You are an attack roll. Uh, uh, action attack with uh, this thing. That do it? Oh, nope, got it. Like it yeah. Sorry, okay, I'm just gonna roll d20 plus seven. No, uh, I can see the thing, it's just so long. I know, <laughs> I know. All right, so a that two. is a two plus seven is nine, so that's it's a, a miss, unfortunately. Wow. Yeah. He, swings, he okay. sees you clumping over to him clumsily and it easily dodges as you're just winding up your attack as you come at him. You can easily see you're gonna go for a swing and he just ducks straight uh, away. I, uh, you, you stay over here, you keep the fight with me, huh? And then um, I think that's basically, that's action bonus, action movement. Yeah, I'm done. Unfortunate. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> but okay. It is uh, this creature's turn now, this nymph. And uh, let's see what she can do. Um, all right. So she can cast a spell called Otto's Irresistible Dance. And she will use it on you, Shem. Uh, oh, basically, oh. she'll point at you. And unfortunately, you are forced to dance. Counter spell. Oh, you've got counter spell? Yeah. All right, very well. Um, I don't think, what level can you cast counter spell at? So. Uh, I could cast it at third or fourth. Um, I will cast this at third level. Third level, that will do it. That's fine, it is a third level spell, I think. Actually, no, I think it's higher. Let's take a look. Just link counter spell to me, so. Just, uh, I get a third level and then. Um, can't remember what actual spell level or irresistible dances. Um, oh, it's sixth level. So oh, I knew I, I knew it was high. All right, uh, let's can, see. So you got to roll DC ten for the spells level of the spell of blades. So sixteen? Um, nope. Uh, no, you'd have to roll a sixteen to make sure it works. So yeah, unfortunately, oh, you are forced to dance for the duration. 
<laughs> this um, is a tap dancing elephant right now. <laughs> so yeah, the target becomes a comic dance in place, shuffling, tapping its feet. Uh, a dancing creature must use all its movement speed to dance. Uh, it has disadvantage on dexterity saving throws and attack rolls. Uh, while the target is affected by a spell, other creatures have attack rolls against it. As an action, you can make a wisdom saving throw to try and get yourself out of it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. be a fast TPK. <laughs> it's a hard, uh, hard spell, that. It's a hard, annoying spell. And uh -huh. she'll then use her movement speed to try. I guess this counts as an attack of opportunity, leaving your area of range because you got a glaive. Is that right, Violetta? That is correct, yes. All right. She'll take that then and she'll try and get away. Five, All right. 15, 25. Uh -huh. Uh, natural 19, 26. That is a hit, yep, yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, five plus four, nine points nine damage. of flashing damage. Very good, actually, yeah. That one's getting hit pretty hard. As she's got several wounds now, are uh, seeping sap rather than blood, it seems. She makes her way away over and sort of tries to hide behind um, the table, but she's easily in doom. Um, Rainier, it's your turn. What would you like to do? Um... The nymph, how tall is she? Can I still see her over that table? Roughly human size, so yeah, you can still see her. Okay, I am going to... my. I close my eyes and when I open them for a moment, it's just like there's a flash of green mm -hmm. and she is sort of outlined in green. I'm going to cast Hunter's Mark on that nymph. All right, sure thing. Okay. As my bonus action. And then I'm going to fire a couple shots at her. All right, sure, go ahead. Oh, I'm supposed to roll on here. I'm not no, used okay. to that. Roll on there if you want. I mean. I'm so used to. Uh... You don't have to roll on roll 20. No, it's fine. I will. I'm trying to practice. A 19 is a hit, definitely. And go ahead and roll your hunters amount damage as well. All right. Let's see. Not that works. I don't know if I hit cast on here, if it'll roll the damage or if it'll just... Generally doesn't usually. Yeah, I'm just gonna roll dice. I'm sure that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I rolled a six. All right, very good. Um, yeah, he's getting chipped away hard. And then uh, I actually have two shots. Oh yeah, of course. Go ahead oh. and roll your second shot. As this first one flies true in sort of a complete straight path, it doesn't lose any levity until it sinks into this thing's torso, straight in the center at the sort of solar plexus of the body. And soon after, another arrow joins it with a seven. You can roll your hunter's mark damage again. All right. That was a four. Very nice. Yeah, you're doing a lot of damage to this one, actually. This she's uh, sort of reeling by now with the several glaive wounds and the arrows, which she's still in control of this um, Otto's Irresistible Dance, which is not, as it turns out, a um, concentration spell. So there you go. A bit of a pain in the ass, but you've got to pay for it by dancing like an elephant. So there you go. Oh, um, <laughs> Artemisia, it's your turn. What would you like to do? Okay, so I am not the best with roll 20, so the one that is doing the Otto's dance, how far is that from Artemisia? Um, it's, have you got a bow or? Uh, she's going to oh. cast a spell. She's going to cast Tidal Wave. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> right. Um, so I, think, I think I'm good, but... Yeah, I think Tyler's got a pretty hefty distance, hasn't it? What's its... Uh... 120 feet? Yeah, she's easily within 120 feet, yeah. Okay. Up to 30 feet long and up to 10 feet wide. So if I can do it 30 feet long... Yeah. These, these two next to each other... These, these two. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you can see my mouse. <laughs> I, like, I'm going to do, like, do you mean this one here? And then which one? The next one over. That one. That's Shem. Next one over. That one. Those two. What's their distance? Oh, they're like, they're about 15 feet away from each other. So um, they wouldn't be able to hit them both. Okay. But it would also hit Shem. You, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to hit them both anyway. I mean, if they're 50, it's 10 feet wide, right? It is... Or is it 10 feet wide and then it's like quite a long... That makes more sense. I 30 think feet long, 10 feet wide, and up to 10 feet tall. Yeah, sure. So... Okay, uh, so we're going to hit the one that's doing the autos dance. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. You certainly can. So that's a dexterity saving throw for me, I think. 
Yes, uh, 14. Uh, it succeeds, but still go ahead and roll damage. Okay, on a failed save, creature takes 4d8. Half damage, yeah. Okay, so is there a way to do that? Hey, yeah, you've got it. Um, you've rolled it there, I can see. Oh, awesome. Uh, for 22 damage, which becomes 11 for her because she succeeded a save. As um, several benches and loose food and cups are sent flying and wrapped up in this tidal wave, it's more that that does the bludgeoning damage than the water itself. As um, one of the tables just gets lifted up in it and like completely crushes the upper half of this creature, but it is not dead. I think so, that is a concentration spell, Harry. Irresistible dance. Is it? Have you checked yeah. that for me? And on roll 20, okay. it says concentration up to one minute. Yeah, that's, it is. I look too. It is right. That makes more sense. It is quite a strong spell. Yeah, so here like, we go. Yeah, that's crazy. Pulling, um, that's what, I'm going to oh, roll five times checks. Yeah. Like, yeah, she must. She has to fail one of them. She's been yes. attacked five times since. So yeah, you're out of the dance. All right. Um, Thank God. Takes 22 damage. So sure. there's a little bit of a hole around you where your feet have been like stomping. Yeah. In. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's hard to tell you're dancing and maybe just doing some sort of war chant. Rampage. Yeah. Flailing, <laughs> really. <laughs> um, so, Artemisia, does that end your turn after the tidal wave? Yes, that'll be it. All right. So, it is the Satyr's turn. Who are all going to surround Shem, of course, and they are all going to sort of lash out with their um, various scavenged goods and weapons, most of which are um, basically their own horns. So they all just basically surround you and start rearing up and ramming you with these horns. So we've got a 16, a 5, and a 7. Can't hit the giant elephant in front of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure they are hitting you, but yeah, it's just, you're not feeling it. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, it's just so thick. Thick skin, yeah. You just cannot like you feel these horns that are hitting you. It's like a, a baby pygmy goat attacking a giant. <laughs> you know, just like looking up, rearing back, and nailing their heads against you, but it's doing nothing. So that ends their turn. So uh, Violetta, it's your turn again. All right, not one to uh, let somebody get away so easily. I will proceed to move up. Okay. Uh, to the nymph, and unleash another uh, volley of attacks. Uh, including uh, the first one will be a menacing attack. Okay, uh, sure. Which is one of my superiority to die. Uh, Are you a battle master? I am a battle <laughs> master. Uh, the first attack is a natural 15 and is not a pa power attack, not power attack, great rope master attack. So 22 to hit. Uh, 22 is definitely a hit, yeah. All right, and then I can do this and then expend my superiority die to add to the damage. All right. Uh, so 12, 16 points That's of damage. Very good indeed. And she must make a DC 15. Uh, I think it's a wisdom save. Uh, uh, yes, DC 15 wisdom save. Looks like she succeeds on it. All right. She is not frightened. No, uh, not quite. These things are would be rather die than admit fear to a mortal. Fair enough. Uh, the second attack is going to atta- uh, hit. This one will be Great Weapon Master. Uh, eight. All right. Um, an eight is a miss entirely, unfortunately. Um, and just then, swinging wide as she just finally learns a lesson from this glaive and throwing herself from its path. So, And then the pummel strike. Yeah, sure. Following around with the pummel strike. Uh, natural 12, 19. 19 is a hit. Yeah, definitely. All right. 1d4. Uh, two plus four, six points of damage. Six points of damage. Very nice indeed. Which brings it down to that. Yep, she's looking very hurt now, <laughs> having been hit on by everybody. Um, yeah, it's not. She is rather cute. I mean, that. yeah, hit on by everybody. You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> hit by everybody. Uh, all right, uh, hit up by everybody. Yeah, <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, so it brings it around. Is that in your turn, Violetta? I guess it does. All right, sure thing. Uh, having dealt with this creature, this um, this slave, this thing's going to use its movement speed to go... Oh, it can't. It's restrained, isn't it? Completely. That's right. Uh, right. Luckily, it can do more than just that, though. Being completely restrained, it can still cast its... Oh, it can't cast, but it can use its longbow twice at disadvantage. Going for Urania... Uh, for a, sorry, let's use the first two. A six and a ten. 
Uh, neither hit. Yeah, sure. He can't really work his arms in the restraint to draw a bow properly, and the arrows just fall flat at your feet. So, being restrained, he rolls with disadvantage on his attacks. So, he uh, fails both of those, um, but he will do... Oh, yeah, a... chuckles a bit at his misfortune with his bow. Very well, you can do, but um, he will also face step again. Um, 30 feet, but still restrained, of course, um, to 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 to here, and that'll end his turn. So, uh, would you like to roll me a death saving for a group? I'm sorry to oh, have I, I'd so love to. in the combat that you didn't get to do anything. Yeah, hey, I'm, I'm the one that chose 35 health and 12 AC. So. <laughs> Very well, yeah. That's uh, true. You see Grumio kind of rolling on the ground. He looks like he'll probably pull through. <laughs> yeah, okay. In 18, certainly a success. So, uh, Belagos, it's your turn. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, the seder to the right of me, I'm going to uh, pull out a rope. And I'm holding on to the end of it, and I'll say restrain, and it shoots out, wraps around him, and he's got to make a DC 15 save or be restrained. Have you just got loads of items which restrain me? <laughs> no, just know? the two. It's a, it's a deck saving phrase, he said. Yeah, yeah, DC okay. 15. Uh, he fails. Uh, all right, that'll be all that. So I'm going to move over towards uh, the one that I've got wrapped up in the binds. Okay. Uh, unfortunately... Uh, the same issue I was having earlier with the display going completely black has happened again, so I can't actually touch anything on the board. Oh, right. That's weird. Hang on. Um, but uh, I'm going to shout at it as close as I can get to it. Uh -huh. I guess I can't get all that close, but uh, I'll move as far as I can. Yeah, you get next to it. It's fine. And, uh, you know, give this thing up. Hey, do you really wish to see either all of us lay dead or you laid down as well? Give it up, and I'll let you free. And that'll be the end of my turn. All right. Go ahead, roll a persuasion or an intimidation, I'll say, actually. Excellent. Luckily, I have some dice right here. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be 15. 15, yeah, they'll respond to it on their turn. Um, so, Shem, it's your turn, surrounded by satyrs. Finish dancing, and I look around, and I go, oh, God, not really made for this kind of party. And I sort of smack the one right in front of me here with another booming blade attack. Yep, sure, go ahead. Roll attack. Let's do something here. 19 uh, is a hit. Yeah, There definitely. we go. Alright, so I will booming blade that, so he takes an additional two, so it's, uh, let's see, 1d6 plus 4, 2d8 plus 4. Alright, 1d6, 2d8, uh, and then he will also, I will summon the Thunderclap ability from the Thunder and Lightning staff, and they will all take 2d6 but have to make saving throws. All right, so <laughs> let's see what we've got here. Uh, he takes 11 damage from your first few hits. So, uh, so a DC 17 constitution throw. All right, so let me just get through these. So that's 11, 14 damage he takes from your first initial hit. This one that you've attacked, you know, standardly. And then the three of them make a DC, what constitution throw? DC 17. All fail. Yep. So they take uh, full eight thunder damage and are deafened for one minute. Oh, no. They can't hear the sounds of their own laughter that they're uh -huh. going to succeed. <laughs> uh, yeah. How sure are they that they will succeed against mortals? Yeah. Three, seven, 14, uh, 14 plus four. So, yeah, 18 plus all that stuff. Yeah, cool. All right, sure thing. Yeah, that's all done. Uh, yeah, you do a huge sort of cacophonous thunder in the middle of the island. Uh, sends a lot of these uh, sort of empty mugs and um, bowls around you in different directions, sort of a knockback collateral damage, but it definitely damaged these satyrs quite a lot. So, does that end your turn, yeah? That's it. All right, it's this thing's turn that's been hammered on by everything. Um, and now it's going to use... Um, Let's see, it's probably going to use another spell. Um, it will use... Should I use this spell, maybe? Just wondering if it's any good anymore. Uh, yeah, they'll use Confusion. Um, the 10 foot radius uh, sphere. So she's going to use it on both Rainier and Artemisia. No! Uh, I need you both to make me a Wisdom Saving Throw DC 16. Ah, I can't. I'm too far away. You can't kind of spell this uh, one as well. Far away. <laughs> ah, barely. Seventeen. 
17. So I've got a wisdom save from you, Rainier, yeah, is a failure. What about Artemisia? 19. That is a dirty 20. Oh, okay, yeah, you succeed. Sure, no problem. Um, that means that at the start of your turns, Rainier, yeah, I'll need you to make me a 1d10 to see what you can do and what you can't do, uh, which will be the end of her turn now. She's not going to make the same mistake of moving away now. She's rather guarding herself from Violetta having uh, suffered that ugly attack the last time. So, Rainier, yeah, roll me a 1d10. Okay, I'm just going to roll dice through that. I rolled a nat one. A nat one. This creature uses all its movement to move in a random direction. Roll a 1d8. Four. Four, so we'll say that is... Do one, two, three, four. Use all your movement speed. How much movement speed do you have? 30 feet. So go into this pillar, I guess, over here. <laughs> <laughs> That's that you go down here. That's all your movement speed. Um and you don't make any actions this turn either unfortunately she's scared of me yeah confusion's a nasty spell um but it is concentration like the other one so something to consider uh as it still is on you effectively for the next minute until someone stops that from us so after miss you it's your turn having seen rainier sort of run over to a pillar randomly and just stare at it but hard to yeah, yeah. hard to uh, <laughs> understand what she's doing she just looks at this pillar rainier what on earth? Ugh. And Nico, is he still partially dead? Uh, yeah, unconscious for out, yeah. sure. He's unconscious. Yeah. Okay, so I am going to move over to him and my feet is uh, healing. Okay, sure thing. I gotta, I gotta pull that up real quick. The healing fee. I mean, it means you can use your healing kit to bring someone to one health or something, right? Yes. If you're and, your uh, one as an action, you can spend one use of the healer kit to use one d six plus four. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that what you're gonna do? Yes, that is exactly what I'm gonna do. All right. Sure. Um, plus a number of hit points equal to the creature's maximum number of hit dice. So um, that's 1d6 plus 4 plus 8, I think. For I think so. Nico, I think that's how it works. Um, so go ahead and roll 1d4. 1d4. <laughs> that's a 1. A 1. That's not bad. Plus 4 is 5. Plus Nico's maximum number of hit dice of 8 is 13 points of healing. And you... almost half health. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's crazy you're like in this <laughs> this like this tagging along. Yeah, you know, I have to be here. But you are okay, you're conscious, but you are prone, Grimio. Yeah. You're kinda of, right. uh, grown into life. Uh kinda of not look at anything right now. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you feel a little better, Grumio. I'm afraid that is the best I can do at the moment. Uh, better than being on the ground bleeding out, thank you. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Uh, does that need turn on to this year? Okay. Uh, can I use my cantrip shillelagh? Uh, yeah, sure. That's not a problem. Okay. I do want to cast that. All right. Sure. I will ignore the damage and the attack for now, but you do get the shillelagh off. No problem. Okay. Awesome. All right. So, Satus turn. Um, they are immediately going to turn from attacking Shem, who they've realized is just some horrid creature that is um, <laughs> they are as afraid of you as the Romans are as of elephants. It's Hannibal <laughs> charged them across the map. And they will so instead make their way around you and go for Belagos. One of these people is rolling at disadvantage. I'll call it the first one, as they just continue to use their horns to try and ram you. So 11, uh, 15, and a 22. Uh, the 22 will hit. All right, sure. So you take six budgeting damage from that creature. Uh, do I get an attack of AO or an attack of opportunity on this one? Is it entered your range yet? So indeed you do. All right. Uh, um, I think you get an attack of two on both of them. Uh, no, no, no I... that one's been there for the whole time, so no problem, yeah. Uh, 16. A 16 is a hit on the closest uh, one. Uh, oh. Uh, 14 points of slashing damage. Wow, yeah, you nail this That's thing, damage. and it just the glaive cuts open a huge wound right down its center, and there's a blood splatter that goes everywhere. Um, but it is not dead, but it looks severely wounded. So, uh, yeah, that's a pain. That ends the Satyr's turn, and speaking of big damage, V11, it is your turn, so. Uh, fantastic. Uh, 
I'm going to grit my teeth and try and finish off this uh, this dryad here. All right, sure you. thing, absolutely. Uh, so first attack is coming out. This is going to be great weapon master. Uh, no. <laughs> no need to say. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, just no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the second attack will not be great weapon master. Is a natural 13, so 20. 20 is a hit, yeah. And the damage is 4 plus 4, so 8 points. Of 8 slashing points. Damage. And this basically knocks her off balance and her focus on Rainier lapses, and you are out of the effects of confusion, Rainier. Awesome. And then the pummel strike. Yes. That is a natural 20. Okay, sure, that is definitely a hit. And uh, do I roll two dice or do I double it? Um, oh, sorry, natural 20. Uh, roll two dice, please. Two dice, all right. First d4, it's a four. Second d4, it's a two. Six, oh, two ten six. points of bludgeoning damage. All right, exceptionally good. Uh, this thing's looking extremely hurt and it begins throwing up its arms as if to beg for no more. But it's, um, is that the end of your turn, Violetta? That is the end of my turn. Yeah, but it's this creature's uh, turn, and he will use face step to get closer to you, Artemis. Here, here, uh -oh. still restrained, even though he's face stepping around. He'll look to his uh, combat his drinking buddy over there, and he'll say, "Coward, keep fighting. We can't lose the mortals." And he will um, use his um, <laughs> um, multi attack longsword, twenty six and a ten, on you, Artemis. Here. I assume the 26 is a hit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for right. her AC is 15. Yeah, so it, take, it hit. Uh, 8 slashing damage and 8 fire damage for a total of 16 damage. I, I could have survived 16 that. 16 damage. <laughs> just. just. Ah! <laughs> um, Ouch. Okay. Right. Uh, which will end his turn. Um, it's your turn, Grumio, but you are prone. All right. Grumio is going to stand up, put an arm on the table for support, kind of clutching his wounds, look around. Uh, these guys are real assholes. He'll grab a, a tankard uh, from the table, uh, go and kick the Eldrin here in the balls, uh, All right. and use the help action uh, against him. Uh, and then he'll take the tankard and throw it at the other Eldrin across the way uh, All right. and take the help action against her, which I can do as a bonus action because I'm a mastermind rogue. <laughs> <laughs> these, are, these are certainly the actions of a mastermind. <laughs> I, will, I will kick one in the balls and throw a tank at the other. There is some complex combative maneuvers going on here, but Lobia's that we can't see it. But in Grumio's mind, he's measured it. He's throwing a tank at it one, kicking the balls of another. Sure. So each, the first attack against them, each of these creatures has advantage, courtesy of Grumio's mastermind. So uh, does that end your turn, Grumio? Is it, that will indeed. Action? All right, sure thing. Um, Belagost, it's your turn. Depending on if you attack the upwards um, Sator, which has... Is it this Sator, Grumio, over here that you uh, put the... Uh, through the tanker that, or...? I uh, know it would be the other Eladrin. Oh, right, okay, no problem. Yeah, that's fine. Um, right, so yeah, both Eladrin have um, attacks of uh, advantage against the first attack on them, but Belagost, what would you like to do? So, uh, seeing things turn in this way, and uh, it seems like no amount of telling them to give up is going to get them to give up. I enter a rage and oh, right. call upon the spirits of my ancestors. They uh, rise up beside me and uh, I'm going to just rain two punches straight into the one that's uh, bound up in the bands at this point. Okay, okay. Is this uh, actual punches or...? Yeah, they're, they're going to be straight punches. All right, so that's an improvised... Like angry enough to break out the weapons. Do you have a tavern brawler type thing or...? No, no, it'll just be uh, one, so that'll be an 18 there. That's, that is a hit, yep. And so that'll just, be a 16 um, as well. It's just, I think it's a one plus your strength modifier then for the damage. Yes, and that'll uh, take it to, uh, give me just one second. That'll take me to four damage. <laughs> four damage, yeah, but you hit him twice, right? So. Did you hit him twice or? Uh, yeah, the second one was a 16. Oh, that hits too, so there'd be 8 damage total, 8 bludgeoning damage, which is yeah. not enough to take him down, but it is enough to make him put, throw up his arms in defense and beg for mercy. Um, but it is Shem's turn. What would you like to do? Uh, so one of them is begging for mercy. Which one? Um, basically this one and that one there. Ah, okay. Uh, so then I will um, see how well they behave and try to run through towards um, towards this one over here. 
Okay. Uh, uh, let's see. I will go to there. You will take two attacks of opportunity from the oh, ones that haven't. Bastards. Yeah, right. that haven't decided that is the end. They're 12 and a 7 just completely missed those. They <laughs> just hit. I mean, I'll say that as you walk through them, they both tried to put you with their ram heads, but you definitely move through them and they hit each other with them instead. So okay. I'll have them roll attacks on each other. Um, a 6 and a 7, respective damage. <laughs> As they just head by each other as you pass through them with unusual grace for a Luxodon, but it does happen. So, yeah, they take, um, they just hit each other for that damage. But, yeah, so sure. uh, what would you like to do with your turn, Shun? In a certain life, I dance the ballet. Um, I will throw a lightning lure towards this Eladrin here. All right. A lightning uh, lure. DC what 15. This is do again. It's a. Uh... He gives, I pull him towards me if I, if, if I succeed. All right, sure. Uh, DC fifteen strength. Yep. Um, so out of my out of my uh, tusks, my my cover of tusk, this big lightning whip rips around him and tries to tug him towards me, but fails. It's very close to getting him, but he manages to just sort of resist the magic as it's just about to wrap around him, and he just throws himself a bit backwards and just grabs nothing in the air. Unfortunately, I am done with this. I will use. Sorcerer points to quicken a dragon's breath, and I will shoot more lightning out of my trunk at him. All right, sure thing. Um, go ahead and do that, and that's a concentration, I think, as well. It is. There's it's a lot of stuff going lightning. on in this roll here. <laughs> this is a very what the hell is this supposed to be? Okay, okay, so I guess it rolls all the different things. Yeah. I just want lightning damage, which was 15. Uh, that's lightning true. Damage. It was the 15, definitely. Yeah. 15 um, is definitely enough to make him squirm. As, um, how does this look? What does this move again? Yeah. It's, um, it's my trunk whips right. up and just sprays lightning at him. Sure, <laughs> that's so that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty awesome. Pretty badass. So, yeah, definitely. And uh, it does manage to just narrowly avoid Grumio and um, Artemisia as this thing gets a horrible jolt of a, sort of like electricity up its. Up usually incorporeal body, but for a second just comes into the proper existence as this thing te- makes it tense up. But um, does that end your turn, Shen? Uh, that would be it. He does get a deck save. I don't know if you rolled it or not, but maybe you did. Um, de- oh, right. No, I didn't. You're right. I rolled that for the other one, but not for this one. Um, let's see. It succeeds, so he doesn't take yeah, All right. So he, so he takes, um, he takes eight seven damage. damage. Oh, eight seven damage. damage. Whatever. Yeah, yeah we'll that's see. it. Welcome back to the professionally run LSRPG where nothing ever goes wrong technically. So, um, and anything that anyone says that did happen is a liar and you should not trust them. So, but <laughs> welcome back. It's Pantheon one shot time. And we are on the island of Aea, which in the Greek buffs of on you will know the Isle of Circe. Uh, some say to be the goddess of magic. Some say to be a vile sorceress, but who knows who really knows the truth. This island is playing host to the Edonia Festival, the festival that happens every year when Aphrodite is reunited with Adonis after his allotted time spending with Persephone in the underworld, returning to his true love of Aphrodite. As Zeus decreed, they would spend he would spend a third of the year with Persephone, a third of the year with Aphrodite, and a third of the year with one of his choosing, of which he always chooses Aphrodite anyway. So, we are at that festival of reunification, but it's not turning out to be the most simple of affairs. After the gift-giving ceremony, where the players presented their gifts to Adonis and Aphrodite, they were left with a few rowdy satyrs that refused to move on to the next area of enjoyment. Anyone who's tried to remove drunkards from the bar at closing time will know exactly what this is like. So, um, the party intervened and assisted the, um, the nymph trying to move on the satyrs, and they were hastily attacked. But it seemed like only one of the fawns, one of the nymphs rather, the hammer dryad, was the one that really intended harm. And the others soon caved, and the party emerged victorious. And that's where we join them now, as, the, um, as they restrain this um, more boisterous, more violent of the nymphs that they've come across. And he just looks from one of you to the other, and he'll address immediately Belagos, saying, Remove this magic from me. If you think it contain, contain me, I will show you my true power, and then you will be very, very sorry. Hmm. Well, I suppose I can't leave you in there forever, can I? Well, you uh, can try. But don't try, please. Let me out, really. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> if you promise to be good about it and move along to the uh, hunt as you're supposed to, I suppose I'll let you go. I promise to move along to the hunt and do as I am told. 
That doesn't seem very sincere. Perhaps you should not. Why shouldn't we trust him? Because they tried to kill us. Yes, why won't you trust me? Oh, he was going to die anyway. He's sickly and poor, and he, <laughs> he only died in one swing of my sword. If that it wasn't no me... Talk about the hell. Uh, all right, it was two <laughs> swings, okay? <laughs> it is only that I got to him first and not a gentle breeze, which will soon be his death, I am sure. I happen to enjoy his cooking quite, quite often, so perhaps we should just leave you where you are. I uh, don't think you should free him, Belagast. Ah, you will rue the day leaving me here. I will chase you down to Tartarus itself to exact revenge. You see, I think he makes a very good point. <laughs> perhaps this one time I can give a gift. And as I say the word gift, the band's kind of... Ah, thank you. Now die! No, he won't say that. <laughs> 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 to the fest, to the hunt. He's smarter than that. <laughs> <laughs> we hope. Nose is outnumbered, so he'll just say, you made a wise decision. I was about to show you my true power, something doubtless you would not have escaped from. But for now, to say thank you for releasing me, I shall let you live. To the hunt, as you say. To the hunt. Great. I can't wait to see what else, what other majestic animals you can make dance. What a, what a powerful spell. <laughs> <laughs> Truly. Um, yeah, Ovid will be sort of crawling from underneath one of the tables, having taken cover there. And he'll approach you, Grumio, and he'll just look over you, having been brought back to just to life uh, from unconsciousness. And he'll just say, Grumio, whenever I think that you find a way to hit rock bottom and impress me at the very least, you find a way to make me more embarrassed to have you as a slave. Uh, uh, my apologies, Master, but at least it was me uh, that took the blows and, and not you. That was well, the intention, that, of course. That is to be expected, Grimio, but please, at least next time, try and land a single blow against the enemy. Well, um, uh, well, of course, Master. Uh, another dope. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> he'll, take that, he'll, he'll make his way along. <laughs> Grimio, I swear, I swear by Athena's wisdom herself, you are the stupidest person on this plane. <laughs> just um, continuously berate you as he yeah. makes his way along, as is his right. In all yes, of, uh, of course, Master, the stupidest you ever knew. The I'll stupidest turn. I would ever know. <laughs> I'll turn to Artemisia. Are all men this stupid? From my observations, yes, they are all this stupid. This is one of many reasons why I choose to remain in the forest. I don't blame you, honestly. <laughs> in, in all of this, uh, Belagos is going to sort of make his way over to Grumio and give him a quick pat on the back and all. Yeah. Uh, it's best not to let uh, these things dwell on the mind. Uh, the stations and such, you know. It's the will of the ancestors, not your fault. Uh, I, I, know, I know my place. Don't, don't worry about it, Belagos. Uh, just if you, if you need a good meal, you know where to find me. Aye, right, that is true. You find him on the floor. Yeah. Been knocked out, most likely. Yeah, groveling and pissing myself. Yes, of course, Master. Yeah. I could have... Say, he wasn't the only one on the ground just now. Yeah. Then the... At least he had the distinction of going down to a blow. I'd say he's worth more than you wager him to be worth. He's worth nothing. He's slavery. <laughs> he's free. As you claim, of course. Yes. Uh, don't worry, Grumio. I, I have a good appreciation of you. As incompetent as you are, you do make me keep me in good spirits. Um, yeah. As you're having this conversation and you're walking along the marble paving towards the more center of the island, where there is a small sort of hillock of forestry, which seems to have been kept as not just a place to hunt, but almost like a nature reserve for that very purpose, where uh, animals can be released for the for the sport of hunting, one of Adonis' is his favorite pastimes. And once you get there, you will see the same satyrs and nymphs, not the same ones before, but they're all there. They're all enjoying the food and the wine, and a lot of them are now being able to converse with Aphrodite and Adonis on a more 
um, level existence. Um, Aphrodite will be um, accepting gifts in a more personal way of uh, glasses of wine passed to her, glasses of wine, cups of wine passed to her, um, you know, certain different pieces of trinkets, uh, bits of silk from different lands, the scraps that the satyrs have come up with, as her very aura of her being there seems to have infected them with a magnitude that they have towards her. Uh, Adonis stands by, stringing a bow, pulling it taut um, until it finally snaps around the other end, and he gives it a few twangs as he looks to you um, coming over. And um, who was it who gave him the pelt? I think it was um, Violetta, was or was it Rania? That was you, Rania. Uh, Rania, right? Yeah, he'll uh, immediately stand up from stringing his bow, and he'll uh, walk over to you, Rania, and he'll say, "Rania, are you ready for the hunt?" Indeed, I am. I look forward to it, but keep in mind it is not a simple boar we chase. I have been told this boar is bigger than any that I have ever seen. It was brought here especially for me by my friends here, Aris, Artemis, and Apollo, mm -hmm. who have graced this event with their presence. Indeed. Boars can be dangerous. Indeed. You know how to kill, yes? An arrow won't do it alone. We need to approach close, penetrate its thick hide with a spear. I'm sure you're quite skilled. I look forward to seeing it. Huh. I look forward to showing you what I can do. And the rest of your friends, you will join us as well. Uh, the hunt for the boar will be a event told in history by your friend Ovid here, I'm sure. You will write in great length of how I slayed the boar with your help. Uh, indeed, I, I, I suppose that a killing a boar is something which many will sing about. And I sort of, like, look around wondering why this is such an eventful moment. <laughs> yeah, my friend, it is not just a boar. It is the Aramathian boar. It was born of Typhon, lord of all monsters. It is a creature of great renown, terrifying to view. Ah, but... well, maybe lead with that next time. It sounds much better when you put it that way. <laughs> Yeah, maybe you are right. What, what do I know? I, I just look pretty. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> he'll... Uh, sort of reapproach Aphrodite and uh, Ovid will lead up to you, Shem, and say, bit of a chatty one, isn't he? Chatty without really saying anything either. It's the worst type of chatty. <laughs> but you, Sorry, you, 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 to? Sorry. you, 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 uh, Shem, are not chatty at uh. all. <laughs> you're quite, you're quite the stoic one. You say very little. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear what you said. Sorry, I missed it. That's all right. <laughs> it's my fault for using an obnoxiously silly accent. But, um... <laughs> uh, uh, Avid, I just hope that um, when you write the poem of this great hunt, perhaps you would let me perform it for you. Ah, uh, well, perhaps. Uh, are you good at uh, recital or poetry? I, I wouldn't have assumed. I'm quite charismatic, and I can uh, punctuate everything with a. <laughs> when oh, oh my word! <laughs> Don't do that. It's please. We get a well, slight like warning next time. Uh, <laughs> of course, I apologize. It's uh, I'm just excited to see such a majestic creature meet its doom, just as we uh, nearly did moments ago. <laughs> well, uh, if it's all the same, I I will stay here. Uh, uh, while you go on the hunt, I, not something I particularly very good at, but I'm sure if I can trust you to relay to me a good account of what happens. I will give it to you in as much detail as I can. You see, an elephant has no, no, you said it up too well, Harry. <laughs> no. What have I done? <laughs> And that's today's street. <laughs> that's... Yeah, You're that's... the aristocrats. Uh, <laughs> say, damn it. Uh, I... <laughs> okay. Wow. Um, Sean. Um, Adonis and several other satyrs with uh, hastily constructed bows are going to approach what seems to be two set aside pillars alongside a sort of large, around 12 foot marble wall that spans this contained forest area of somewhat around four or five kilometers squared, which has been released, as he says, a large ball courtesy of the gods who are visiting to attend the event. For That's their gift for Aphrodite and Adonis, is a grand boar that they can hunt together. Um, Aphrodite, of course, not the hunting type, will uh, allow Adonis his time, having spent three months in the underworld. He's eager to get out in the sunshine and do some hunting. And um, he will look to the wall of you and say, I suggest that 
we go to party together. What do you say? You got to accompany me, the mighty Adonis, on a task that will be written about for some time. I'll uh, slam the bottom of my uh, glaive into the ground and say, you do us a magnificent honor, Adonis. We'll yeah. serve you best we can. I hope so, indeed. It is a mighty foe. We will need all your help to slay this, this boar. But yes, uh, let's be about it. About the business, let's be about. So, if you'll follow me and try and keep quiet. The boar is very wily, very, very cunning. We must be about our wits. And um, he'll take a step forward into this forested area. And um, as soon as he stop, I mean, he steps forward and he looks back and waits for you up to follow, if you want to follow. And Ovid will just look, look to each of you and he'll say, hey, I, I, I'll let you uh, relate to me what happens. I'll stay here and write up the notes so far on the island of Aya. Right, Ovid, is there anything you want to know in particular about the boar? Anything I should uh, keep an eye out for? Well, uh, on the very rare condition, Grimio, that you managed to last more than five seconds in this fight, right. I hope you well, can, can write it down me. and that'll last longer than me. That's a very true point. If you have to die, do make sure you die on top of some notes that are some use, Grimio. Um, Grimio, I, I wish to know the boar's uh, general physique and look and the physiology of the creature, if it seems to be a beast of some natural phenomena or if it's been blessed by the gods, I don't know. If you can replay this to me, perhaps I will give you more than, uh, maybe I will stop paying you a small wage of some drachmy. How does that sound? Uh, that's uh, very agreeable. I will, I will uh, attempt to make sure I get those details for you. Uh, very well, very well. Uh, do make sure to look after Grumio. Uh, if, if, you will, if one of you must die, don't feel too ashamed of throwing him to the boar to escape. It, 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 I'll find another slave soon. But Grumio, good luck. <laughs> no, uh, give of you a course, pop. master. Yeah. Try and keep everyone else alive. Indeed, indeed, Grimio. Try and keep everyone else alive. Um, do my best. <laughs> <laughs> this gives you another pat on the back, and um, <laughs> he'll take a step back and find a, a crumbled piece of pillar that's been knocked over and use it as a seat as he starts riding on some papyrus. Uh, don't worry, Grimio. I have plans for you if we get the chance. You might be the uh, the hero of this. Wouldn't that be fun for Ovid to have to write in his poem? Grumio, the hero? I mean, it, <laughs> that'd be a good joke, but um, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. There's, there's a, <laughs> there's a uh, god here. I don't, I don't think I should be, you know, the, the one doing everything. I'll reach under one of my back sheaths and pull out uh, a very nice long sword, and I'll hand it to Grumio. Do not have to use uh, one of these. God, gods know. <laughs> well, one, Pick out a short one. Yeah, try yeah, this one. That'll be a, a bit better, I guess. So you just kind of yeah, you just point the end into whatever you're trying to kid. Right. Uh, I'm gonna <laughs> hide in the trees. Uh, but if it comes to me, I'll I'll be sure to. Of course. <laughs> uh, th th thanks, Violet. Of course, Grumio. <laughs> Will the Lady Artemis be joining us? Hmm. I, I think the Lady Artemis is already seeking the boar. I wouldn't want to best, of course, the goddess of the hunt. That's why I'm so eager to get going. But <laughs> I, I, I assume sh that she's going to go a bit easy on me. Well, if this she's already there, then we should go. Indeed, indeed. And Ares and Apollo as well, both famed hunters in their own rights. But being as this is my gift they've brought for me, I, I assume they will allow me the honor of killing it. So we'll start soon see, shall we? Of course. Please, follow me then, and we'll be, uh, we'll engage in this uh, rather delectable hunt. And um, he'll just start walking in. And as you guys walk into this area, this um, this woods, you, even though the satyrs are only about 10 feet away from you on the other side of the barrier that enters, but as soon as you enter, the sounds of laughter and cheer and all sort of festivities of a civil world just disappear. And all you can hear is the gentle chirping of the forest. And rather than the, um, rather than the sounds of cacophonous uh, festivities and things, it's as though some sort of magic's being cast to make it seem like it is a proper haunting area where there is no, it's not as though it's next to a town, it's as though it is the entire wild. It reminds me of home. Indeed, it's a beautiful place. 
yeah, um, Adonis will kneel down to the ground and say, whatever this boar is, it's not here. And I can't see any tracks. Perhaps we should make our way deeper. Come, follow me and try not to get the killing blow. That should be my honor. Of course, Adonis. We would not want to show you up in front of your lovely new uh, amour. Ha, my friend. Aphrodite and I have been uh, paramours for some time. <laughs> ah, and, uh, pardon my ignorance. I We have a, a different kind of system where I am from. Uh, mostly we do not get to choose who we marry. Instead, we are forced. I would not oh. think that either you or her were forced into this, no? Well, Aphrodite made my mother craze with lust for my grandfather. So... Maybe. And <laughs> that sounds strange. <laughs> yes, and, and then when my mother ran away, she turned her into a tree. So, And then she sold me to a goddess of the underworld, and the goddess of the underworld raised me, and then the goddess of the underworld fell in love with me. And then Aphrodite came back, and then she fell in love with me as well, and there was this big argument, and Zeus said to me to stand sometime with Persephone, sometime with Aphrodite, but I love Aphrodite with all my heart, despite how she has destroyed my family and my obvious sense of right and wrong. But I I think we make a very good couple. Ah, of, of course. That, that, that uh, clears it up perfectly, indeed. Great. I imagine all mortals go through the same thing. Mm. It is simple. A very, it's a classic love tale. My mother was turned into a tree and it gave birth to me. Is that not a classic love tale? Not typically, no. Ah, immortals. <laughs> you know not of what love really is, I think. But <laughs> <laughs> Love is being turned into a tree. But I digress. We're talking too much. We are supposed to be on a hunt. No? Who is the of most course. adept hunter of all of you? Well, I am, of course. Ah, Artemisia, I should have expected. Could you perhaps um, track this boar and then I can rush in and kill it with my spear? I suppose, but in return, if it would please you, I would like to be in Lady Artemis's presence. Well, perhaps a different approach. Maybe instead you can try tracking Artemis and then we can find her. I do think that's a grand idea. Hey, if you wish. Um, I suppose we are looking for three human tracks, which is easy since the satyrs, they leave hooves tracks. If we can find any footprints, standard footprints, that would most likely be our friend Artemis and Apollo and Aris. Of course. And she'll start to look and see if she can find any tracks or any, th any bent twigs or anything. She'll roll a survival check. Whew, that's, that's a four. A four, yeah. That's it's four. Been trampled away by all the cloven hoofs of the satyrs, all rushing to get their um, their chance at this ball. What do you see? What do you see with your eyes? Is it uh, very close, uh, very far, or where are they? It looks like most of this area has been damaged by all of the satyrs clamoring, clamoring through here to get through to the wine and the food. No, I, I see. see no tracks. What a shame. The satyrs, they can be very rambunctious, but there is no better party company than a satyr, indeed. However, they do not make the best hunting companions. They're very loud. So, what would you suggest to be the best course of action? How can we find Artemis? I know she is an adept hunter, and she probably covers her own tracks. Uh, let me see if I can help, and I take my snout out and just take a big whiff of the air with my All elephant right. truck. Do Loxodons get a keen smell? Uh, I thought that they had something, but I can't find it now, so I'm not worried about it. All right, go ahead, roll perception uh, in any case. Then. Yeah, let's see what we got. Uh, let's see what that was. A five, man. Five, yeah. The most um, <laughs> unperceptive elephant. Yeah, uh, as you're like raising your trunk in the air, um, Adonis will come up to you and he'll look up at it and he'll say, this is marvelous, a, a very beneficial tool. It is like having a hunting dog, but you are gray and large and fat and you are big and you're much better than a dog and you can talk and you can swing this, uh, this <laughs> staff around and you have many differences from a dog. Now I begin to list them, but what do you Ex smell? Excellent. Um, 
indeed I smell goat shit. <laughs> goat shit. Ah, uh, a lot of it. Not, not the quarry that I uh, am hoping to bag in this hunt. Oh, but uh, Unfortunate, because it is everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> if only we were after goat shit, we would be kings. But unfortunately, I am after a boar. You smell any boar? I fear I do not. It is too much of goat shit. A little goat (laughs) piss, too, but mostly goat shit. Um, Just how big is this forest? It is a... The size of a small uh, collection of... Yeah, not big at all, really. You can walk around it in, say, hmm, half a day. Hmm. Well, if there's just goat shit here and we can't find anything, maybe the... uh... The boar's on the other half. It is maybe something to consider. Uh, you wanted to say something, and he'll look over to you. Sorry, someone was trying to say something for some time. And... Yeah, that was me. Um, right. I was just going to say, so Rania sees all of this. Uh, Artemisia saying that she's, like, the best hunter, and um, <laughs> Jem trying to sniff it out, and she's just wa- watching, waiting. So she's going to step up and kind of say, perhaps... My wolf and I could take a look around. Ah, of course. Um, your wolf, if, if he can find the way. And speaking of which, your elk as well, which I I suddenly realize is still here. And, uh, <laughs> uh, if you send them off, they may be able to find something. Then There is no better I, hunter than a wolf. Yes, he's quite adept at sniffing things out. Ah, good. So am I. <laughs> but it's usually for wood and, food and wine. <laughs> no, so he'll, he'll reach down and give the wolf a pat on the head. And although he is a sort of a, Adonis is a human, but he's got a sort of strange glow to him, which makes him something different. But he is, regardless, a mortal. He just seems to have been chosen for some sort of higher purpose. Uh, so he's not exceptionally tall. He's just uh, tall for a, like a human man. So he reaches down and pets the dog. Uh, he doesn't. It's not like. I don't want to give you the uh, perception that the gods are just like massive, like in that Egyptian gods movie. I can't remember what it's called. That was silly. Um, but yeah, he said uh, he'll uh, say, what, what, what do you see, little wolf? Uh, you, s- you smell the, the boar? Does he speak common? Or I, He can understand you a bit. Um, he listens to me quite well. Sirtis, go take a sniff around, see if you can pick up any tracks. No, send him off to try to yeah, sure. Out some. I uh, I say roll ways. Um, I, I wouldn't want to call it survival, but they're both wisdom saves. So roll me. I say survival with advantage. Yeah, he Just always more... has advantage on. Wiz- it senses, says, yeah. It says yeah. perception rolls relating yeah, to smell, but I'd say perception check relying on hearing or smell. I'd say that if that extends to survival. I'd say in this case that should okay. be fine with survival as well. But they're both wisdom based rolls anyway, so yeah. I don't know if it'll be the same roll. Oh, so you can roll with advantage. You're over the advantage oh. though. Oh yeah, that's true. Let me try again. That's that'll that's finally. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um. The wolf will come back and he will relay that he's found the positions of not only the boar as he spends some 10 minutes out there, but also the positions of um, Artemis and Ares and Apollo, who seem to be hunting together as part of a trio. Would you rather find the boar or the other hunting party? Hmm. Well, your friend here seems very eager to meet Artemis. So perhaps we should go and introduce ourselves the hunt is fun, but it is not very competitive. I, I am expected to win, so disturbing them should not be a problem. All right. Certus, lead the way to Artemis. Yes, Certus. Onwards. Onwards to Artemis. And um, the wolf will weave around for a few trees, and it's not long before you do start to see the um, footprints of humans um, begin to appear in the trodden grass around um Basically, the very perimeter of this enclosed hunting area, which is a big white marble wall all the way around it. And um, eventually, it led to what seems to be a campfire uh, around which um, Artemis, Apollo, and Ares all sit. But um, they don't seem too interested in the hunt. And they seem like normal humans, all in simple togas, all of simple hair. Um, but it is the glow around them that gives them the sort of strange 
uh, magnitude of their appearance. So as you get closer, um, Aries will stand up and look across to you all and see Adonis uh, and the rest of you, but he'll simply address Adonis first and say, Adonis, you're supposed to be out there on the hunt. Took a lot to catch this boar. I didn't expect you to be willy-nilly dancing around trying to find us. And um, as you get closer, he'll look to the rest of you and say, and what's this rebel you've brought with you? Mortals here, are you? <laughs> Typical of you to uh, partner up with the mortals. Uh, well, he is um, teaching us, of course, telling us all of his great deeds, how he was, uh, you know, born of something and, and then was thrown into something and then was <laughs> thrown into something else and then... Ah, was chosen to be a bride. That's good. Yes. What is it that you've done, Adonis, exactly again? What you've done? I'm just really pretty. Ah, that's it. <laughs> He's shown us how he is very, very pretty. Indeed, I am. Yeah, I'm very pretty. Mm. Just in case you will forgot. Oh, well, yeah. Well, 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 well. Mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a handsome man. Such Cannot. is my power. Cannot be argued. Uh, but no, forgive cannot. us. Forgive us. We we seek, and I sort of gesture over to Artemisia. You know, go, Artemisia. <laughs> just, come on. <laughs> she's very stiff, nervous, and she's got her hands clasped. My my lady Artemis, it is beyond an honor to meet you. So you'll basically walk past Aries to around the campfire. The only one sitting is a single woman with sort of very light, sort of strawberry blonde hair, brown almost. Um, as she seems to be very focused on fletching an arrow, which seems to she have um, taken out of her own quiver, but not quite fixed it right. As uh, she attaches the feathers on and makes sure the arrow is sharp, she looks up to you as you approach, or looks back down to the arrow until you speak. When she places it to one side, and she just smiles and um, leans back and says, Ah, Artemisia, I know you very well. In fact, I, I followed you and your your endeavors to please me on this in this world of your mortals. And um, it's it's good to see you here, out hunting, as I'd expect. Yes, Tell me what's, my lady. What has brought you to a... Uh, the, we traveled with Ovid, the poet. He is my master. I am hoping to learn more of poetry and literature so that I may write of my travels and honor you. And when he mentioned that there might be a possibility of being in your presence, I absolutely had to attend. Of course. You understand that I am not really here. Uh, this body, it is a human's body. I can't come down to this place as an Olympian, but I can at least inhabit a body of one of my worshippers and attend this event. Same for Ares, same for Apollo here. Our true forms remain on Olympus. This you can consider almost a possession of some kind. But I digress. Poetry is a valuable pursuit, especially for hunters. Many forget that half of the pleasure in the hunt is boasting of one's exploits and showing people what we can do and what we've hunted. And if you can articulate this better, then all the better to you. And Ovid is no better teacher. There is no better teacher, I assure you. Your words honor me. I hope that I can continue to make you proud and ah. spread your word. You've already made me very proud, Artemis, yeah. That the hunters dragged you this far alone is quite remarkable, in fact. As though your quarry cannot escape, very valuable, valuable traits in a hunter. Tell me, Artemis, do you believe in vengeance? Revenge? Yes, of course I do. You do? Ah, I'm glad to hear it. Perhaps... When all is said and done on this island, you shan't hold too much against me. Uh, never, my lady. You can do no wrong. Anything that you decide to do, it is the correct action. Hmm. Well, perhaps you can help me with something then. 
very small favor. Anything you wish, I would give you my life. There'll be no need for that. All I ask is that you lead Adonis to the boar that we've provided and make sure that he delivers the killing blow. Anything you wish, my lady, of course. I will help him track it, and I will ensure that he delivers the killing blow. And she'll hold out both her clasped hands as though to take both of yours. She'll hold her hands out and, she'll and, lean in and take hers. She'll say only to you, in sort of a half whisper, as you're sort of away from the party, she'll say, Know that what happens here today may seem cruel, but some lessons are best learned harshly. Of course, as you see fit, I will help you in any endeavor that you wish. Trust in my wisdom, Artemisia. I promise to deliver you great fortunes and great glories and great bounties some here to come. I am your eternal servant. Well, the pleasure has been mine to meet you. I very rarely do I get to converse with my followers on such a, on such a personal level. I'm, I assure you I shan't forget this for some time. Go out of miss you, go with my blessing. And live in the comfort that what you're doing has my full support. I am honored. Thank you, my lady. Thank you. And she'll back away from her. Hmm. Now go hunt a boar. Yes, let us let us track this boar. We will find it. Adonis, are you ready? Yeah, I, I suppose so. I I will kill it anyway, so <laughs> let's go, right? <laughs> of course you will. Indeed. Well, where 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 is your best bet? Uh, what is your worst name? Sepris? Sertus. Sertus? Yes. Ah, very well. Sertus, take us to the ball. And you just lead in as though it's the volume of what he's saying. That's the problem. I say, the ball, Sertus. Where is the ball? Could you tell him we're trying to track the ball? <laughs> yes, yeah, gladly. Sertus? Thank you. You'll have the scent of the ball. It's like, <laughs> it's sort of like that computer thing where he's trying to do it right and then someone else does the exact same thing and it works for some reason <laughs> it's like, but that, that's that's what i said but he listens to you he does not listen to me i, I mean, it, what it's the bond that we have it, it just takes time but i've spent like 20 minutes with him how long does it take <laughs> much longer <laughs> perhaps if he knew how beautiful you were it would have worked my beauty does not translate well to the boars, unfortunately. Yes, that's my, the problem, yes. My my tusks are too small. A problem we now share, eh? Your tusks are too small now, too. Mm. I am sure all the females of your species will have no interest in you from time on. <laughs> you have never seen an elephant <laughs> blush, but an elephant begins to blush and throws his head down in shame, walks back over to the Violetta and Belagast. I do, not, I do not like this man, even if he is very good looking. <laughs> do not worry. I'm sure many yes. of the females of your species will. Um, no, yeah. he's right. It's all about it's about how big your tusks are. It's all they care about. It. <laughs> very very unfortunate. Tell them you have made a noble sacrifice for the goddess beauty. Uh, that's nice of you. I wish you wish you were an elephant too. <laughs> all I can say to you is you don't have to worry about the same of your species. <clears throat> so the tusks aren't there for the <laughs> women of your kind. But, uh, well, perhaps you could find someone who finds that uh, charming, I suppose. Uh, though I would be careful. The dwarf speaks wisdom. Perhaps this boar will be attracted to you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> aren't we going to kill the boar, though? <laughs> I suppose, but perhaps we can give the dwarf and the elephant some time alone before we kill it. Is this right? Am I, I reading the situation correctly? <laughs> I don't think oh. that you are, my lord. <laughs> I don't understand what you're saying. Love lost is better than no love at all. <laughs> the boar is mortal, the elephant is mortal. I say let them be in love if they wish to be. In any case, you standing around talking about it won't get us anywhere near the boar, I don't suppose. Yes, yes, sorry about that, big fella. Go and get the board. Go, go, boy. Go, go. Could you tell him to go and get the board, please? Tertus, if you please. 
Thank you, Sotus. And um, he will follow close behind um, the wolf as it sort of puts its snout to the ground and makes its way along and um, sits out what it finds out to be um, hooves of a much larger size than the satyrs, at least. Um, as we're traveling, I'm going mm-hmm. to kind of drop to the back of the group and bring Artemisia along with me. Okay. I want to kind of try to speak to her quietly because I saw her talking to Artemis and Obviously, I'm a hunter. She's my goddess, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what was she like? Oh, my God. Basically, that's where we're going with this. Uh, yes. <laughs> <sighs> sure. Rania. You, you spoke to her. What, what did she say? It was an incredible experience. I am... Um, I cannot believe the honor she bestowed bestowed upon me just by speaking to me. I was so happy for you. You've waited so long for this. <sighs> I am very sorry that about my boastful comment, but I really did hope <laughs> that it would get me a chance to meet her. I hope you can forgive me, sister. Of course, of course. No, no harm done. <laughs> <laughs> now, there I have been given a... And looks around to make sure that they are far away so that they cannot overhear a task. A task? What kind of task? Well, we must make certain, I must make certain that Adonis delivers the killing bl- blow for the boar. I'll, I'll help you, of course. That would be amazing. She, she was very insistent. He must be the one to deliver it. We must ensure that this takes place. All right, well, if that's what Artemis wants, that's what Artemis gets. I guess she, we should just be prepared in case anything... Trust in, trust in the goddess. She will protect us. I hope you're right. Speaking of the boar, though, as the wolf is sniffing along, it lets out a bark as it sees this large mass that's just moved between two tree trunks in the far distance, some, some hundred feet off. Um, immediately, Adonis perks up and looks across and narrows his eyes and sees it. And he looks back to you and says, Ah, the hunt is on. Let I be the first who strikes true for the boar. And he takes off at a pace uh, after this after this boar. Like, um, his bare feet just digging into the soil and kicking off over fallen logs and felled trees and uh, around narrow bends of stones until he's out of sight of most of you. And, and that's anyone's following him heavily. I mean, what are you guys doing as he sort of takes off? Booking it. <laughs> Absolutely. Take after right him. All right, sure. Um, as you follow close behind it, on you'll see where his footprints have tread straight away. He'll be some thirty feet behind him. You get catch glimpses of him as he goes behind trees, but he always seems to be that's that bit ahead. Until um, you come around a corner and you are in sort of a crevice of cliffs where he's managed to draw the boar into a dead end, such as the way of hunting a boar. And he looks back as you um, cross around the the corner there, and he looks over and says. See, it is easy. The hunted boar is as simple as clutching it in a dead end. And then all that is left is to the crack. And he turns around and immediately the boar, instead of moving into a dead end, has charged him instead before he could deliver that final blow with the spear. And all you can see from the back of Adonis emerging from his kidney areas are what seem to be two, three, four, five, six, seven tusks that seem to have pierced his torso. This sort of an amalgamation of different tusks that do not belong on a boar. Several tusks of different kinds that just seem to penetrate through this thing. Traditionally, a boar has two tusks. This thing seems to have more. A lot As more. he just slumps forward against the boar, which you'll notice now to be around 20 feet tall at this point. Like, not 20 feet tall, but 20 feet long and gargantuan. This thing is huge. It's not any normal boar. And that Adonis charges alone showed that on his own island here, on his own day of the Adonia festival, that hubris and arrogance had got the better of him and that he was destined to kill this boar for fun. And he got relaxed with it and the boar charged him instead. And you can see the lifelessness in his beautiful face, his final eyes giving one last sign of recognition before his pupils dilate and his eyes close and he falls to one side of the boar, which just shakes him off. And you can see the whole front of his torso has been ripped open in bloodshed and gore and blood pours from him as he makes one final attempt to clasp it, but his arm falls limp to his side, 
and the ball sort of stomps its feet now looking at the rest of the things that have cornered it and that's where we will roll an initiative roll to um jesus to christ that. <laughs> yeah such as the adonia festival Oh, I forgot to click my token. Hang on. No problems. I can I can figure that oh, out. Okay, cool, cool. All right. So I'm gonna add uh, Zach first, and what would you get, Zach? Eight. Eight. Okay, and I've got a Belagos stat. Twenty. Ha- Harry, I can't see. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's right. I forgot to put you on the thing. Hang on. I'll grab you. Was that God? <laughs> <laughs> that was that was Zeus. Yeah, so, Zeus yeah. said, I can't see. Uh, 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 Harry, I can't see. <laughs> like, oh god! Oh my god! Man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It is invisible. <laughs> I cannot see. All right. Uh, there you go. Okay. All right. So I've got Sham, Belagost, uh, Amy. Let me add Amy. Poor Grumio. They're all the one. I'm in this shit. It's fine. You can hide in the back. That's probably a good thing. I'm gonna die like 14 times over before it even gets to my turn. Super so. Groovio. Let's hope that this gets relayed back to uh, Ovid. <laughs> so you roll the three in his initiative, by the way. Typical fucking Groovio. Right? <laughs> okay, um, so I'm missing. Um, I'm missing. Let's see, uh, Violetta, and I'm missing Artemisia. Twelve for Artemisia. Artemisia. Twelve for Violetta and a six for Artemisia. And I am still unable to see the screen. I can't ah, right. map either this time. That's I, I am indeed blinded. All right, hang on. I can fix that pretty much instantly in a second, actually. So, just adding Artemisia with a six. Okay. Now I will delete all these tokens. Which deletes the turn order. Who knew? Thanks, Roll20. Oh, oh. oh, no. That, that's fun. That's that's good fun. So it's all right. Uh, I can just copy over all your tokens from the previous screen here. <laughs> so evil. Learn something new every day, don't you? Like, Roll20 invents ways to get, you, get at you. Day. Yeah, I've never oh. used Roll20 before. I only have 2,000 hours on it. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, so can everyone see, though? Yes. No. Yes. A no. <laughs> Who was the no? I think it was Violetta. Violetta, right, okay, let me saw that. Quickly. Uh, I don't know. All right, do you want to refresh? Because all, the, all your settings are correct. Let me refresh. And then I'll start re adding people to the turn order. What a pain. <laughs> what a pain. <laughs> there we are. Technology, it makes all the life easier. Yeah, know. right? <laughs> that is a terror. Terrifying creature. Yeah, a horrifying. A bit, yeah. For Shim to Only... say. Only. It's like a Muma kill from Lord of the Rings? What the heck? I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Shim, Shim Only cried. tenuously skirting the very definition of what it means to be a boar. Somehow this font, this nymph has made it here with you. I will just delete him. <laughs> <laughs> I go back. Um... He's followed us the whole way. He's never forgiven us. Yeah. This is when he betrays you. So, Violetta got a 12, right? Yes. And Artemis, you got a six. Yes. I've not got Artemis's token on here. I'm just gonna grab it, hang on. This is where somehow this means that I delete all the tokens again. Right, uh, copy, paste. Right, there you go. And a six for you. Okay. So who am I missing there? I'm missing uh, Shem. What did you get, Shem? Oh, um, what did I get? Shit. An eight? I think it was an eight. Yeah, I think it was an eight. Yeah. And now I will roll the boars. The Erymanthian boar. Erith Erymanthian boar. That's the one, yeah. Um, Initiative. You got an 18. Uh oh. Oh. That's not good. Not great, no. no. Right, so, um,. Turn on the settings. Descending. Now we can get on with it, finally. Uh, all right, so Belagos, it's your turn first. As uh, this thing shakes Adonis to the side and throws him against a nearby boulder, there is a horri- horrifying and very telling sound of a splatter as his limp body just slumps down to the side of it. And as I said, he makes one last attempt to claw the innards that have been torn from him back in, but 
there's no having it. And his his arms fall limp, and his head lock, like lolls to the side. What would you like to do? Right, I've uh, witnessed the fall of uh, <coughs> Artemis, and uh, or not Artemis. I'm not sorry, uh, Adonis. Adonis yeah. hey, yes, I've like watched the fall of Adonis. Yeah. And, uh, I'll call upon my ancestors again. Uh, I cry out their names and charge forward. I want to keep this boar at least as penned in here as we can. You are raging. Correct. And uh, okay. I'm going to move up to just about there, I think. One, two, All right, sure. Um, the boar will use a legendary action straight away. Okay. Oh. Um Actually, no, he can't. With the way you are, actually, he can't use the legendary action he wants to do, so he will not use that yet. Is that your turn there, Belgos? Yes, uh, he's going to stop right there, and uh, I think I'm going to ask the rope to try to tangle its legs. Okay, sure. Strain. So it's DC 15 save on it. DC 15 save. What save is it? Uh, that'll be a dex save, and here I'll link the item as well. All right, sure. Um, strength save. Let's see. Um, strength save. A 19? 19, yeah, that'll, that'll succeed. Uh, succeed, yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It does wrap around its legs, but the pure muscle and like the mass of the legs just tear them up, tear the, tears the entangling rope pretty much apart. And the fact alone that it managed to destroy a magical item tells you vast amounts the, the power of this boar. <laughs> just sweating in my turn. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately so. So Rainier, yeah, this you would assume to be the boar that Artemis referred to. Uh, that was relayed to you by Artemisia. I'm going to look around frantically at everyone. <laughs> do do we run or do we fight? <laughs> and I will... It's a one shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the kind of attitude I want. <laughs> yes, it's a one shot. <laughs> Yeah. I still have to role play it. You're right. Uh, <laughs> That's true. Up here, and I will cast Hunter's Mark on the boar. All right, sure thing. And I'm going to shoot at it. That does help in the general uh, effort of things. So, yep, yeah, uh, I will put a green thing on the sky for Hunter's Mark and go ahead and roll an attack. Nine. Yeah. It just pings off this thing as though you'd fired it at a metal door. All right, I will, I'll fire my second shot at it as well. Sure, go on. This is where, yeah, uh, that is a, a hit for nine damage. And I'll nice. hold the So despite what I said about metal doors just then, um, this one's for some reason goes in. So yeah, no, I'm better at DMing than that for saying some reason that this goes in. Um, this, this one, rather than sort of very hard and tenuous muscle, it finds a soft spot of tendon on its neck where it just managed to sink in. So you do 12 damage total. All right, cool. Okay, sure. Does that end your turn? Yep, that'll do it. All right, it's his turn now. Yay, his turn. Uh, he'll use a bonus action to do Blessing of Ares. So his next bonus, uh, his next attack is 3d10 fire damage. Um, in addition to what it normally does. And he will take um, 5, 10, 5. 15 spaces as he just scrapes his hoof in the ground, walking backwards and narrow, ro like putting its tusks right to the floor and it scrapes them one final time and it lets out a giant charge at you, Belagost. Uh, and it goes straight into you, trampling over things and it gets to use its charge ability, which means that if it makes a tusk attack on the same turn, which it will do for a 24, um, it, you also take... Doo -doo -doo, Roll a DC 14 strength save, please, Belagost. Or you also take 4d6 damage, piercing 12 plus 9 is thing. Uh, strength save, but we can use the roll, not a problem. Uh, you don't take the, uh, you don't get knocked prone, mm. thankfully. Uh, but you do take the um, 21 points of damage, and then it leaves its second. Tusk attack on you for a crit of 29. Oh. Oh. I, I will half the piercing damage at least. Oh, it's halving, you're halving damage, that's true. So, so far you've taken 21 plus, um, so 21, 23, 33, 36, 46 damage so far. 
And then it's got it's the right. Blessing of Ares for 3d10 extra fire damage on its turn oh. for oh. 22 fire damage. So let's see. Let, 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 let's break this down. 46 <laughs> okay. piercing have to 23. So it takes 23 That's physical great. and 22 fire. So you take 45 total damage yeah. from this creature. Which is pretty nasty. As it backed up, you could see the flares of its nos of its tusks beginning to several tusks beginning to sort of get smoky until they finally did start sparking off with flames. Um, and you could just hear in the very sort of background from some sort of ethereal area, you could just hear the laughter of Ares in this boar's own mouth. It's like ha 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 before it charges and these flaming tusks bury into you. You take forty five points of damage. This thing is nasty, so that will thankfully end its turn there. So, Violetta, it is your turn. Uh, seeing my friend Belagost being attacked, I will proceed to move forward a little bit slowly, slower than he did. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'll look at the boar and I'll uh, use my hand to clasp a ring on my finger. Okay, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I will conjure a ball of lightning next to it, and it needs to make a dexterity save. All right, sure thing. It certainly will do. Um, 13. That is not high enough. All this right, sure. Ring of uh, shooting stars. So it takes 4d12 lightning damage. Nice. I like it. Um, I was about to roll that for some reason. You go ahead and roll 4d12. <laughs> I have some to do that when I get it. The lightning damage. Very nice. 31 points. <laughs> so it takes 31 points as uh, how does that look exactly? Does it, is it like struck by lightning or? Uh, a sphere appears next to it and then all of the energy just discharges in one lightning bolt into its side. All right, sure. It doesn't even pay attention to the sphere forming out of its vision, but it does definitely realize it when it finally like coalesces and condenses into sort of a vortex and pops the giant crackling sound of lightning and this thing feels it burning its skin you can see the sort of veins pop up in reaction to the electricity on the boar's side as it takes that a huge amount of damage but does that end your turn be a letter uh yeah yes it will oh all right oh, so yeah. Belagost, get away from it but Belagost, it will take a legendary action just to attack Oh. Uh, with a tusk for 16. 16 will tie. All right, there's a hit then. Um, so you take seven points of damage. Not seven points, sorry, six points of damage. Oh, oh good. Yeah, this thing does not let up as it is on the set. So, Shem, it's your turn. I will turn to Grumio and say... This is your time. It is now. And I cast Polymorph, and it's a fucking one shot. So you're a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Here's, the, here's, a, here's a question How fast can I make a token? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, time me, time me. Kind of Let's see. He's kind of looking <laughs> over his um, his utensils That's as okay. he brings out a cast iron pan. He's like, no, no, no. Oh, this is not good. Uh, and then suddenly, uh, gills start to form. Uh, and his enormous snout and tiny little arms uh, sprout from his form. Oh, so, there you go. And now I'm right. T-Rex, apparently. So it can be edited controlled by all players. So on your turn, if you may, you can use that Tyrannosaurus Rex uh it's actually in the journal to do your attacks if you wish. Um, right, perfect. And, and then I will are... run over and I will quicken a lightning bolt at him as well, reeling up that snout again and just throwing lightning in a straight line at him. Okay. So the, is that a bonus action polymorph? Or... Yeah. Oh, you have I, as well? I can quicken the, the lightning oh, you, bolt. Oh, you quickened, right. Okay, yeah. sure. So go ahead. Um, sorry. And um, it's a save for me, right? Dex save, yes, I think? Yes, so. 15 dex. All right. Um, nine. Fails. 31 points right. of lightning damage. Very nice. But you know what? That's quite a lot. So he'll use a reaction to resistance. Uh, uh -huh. can turn a save into a successful one. So he'll take 15 points of lightning damage. All right. I'll, I'll waste it. That's worth it. That's yeah, worth still it. a lot. Still a lot. But 31's quite extreme. So he will use his <laughs> resistance uh, legendary action. Um, <laughs> all right. Is that any turn, Shem? That's it. All right. Uh, Artemisio, it's your turn. Okay, exactly how far am I from Mr. Creepy Boar? 
Um, I'd say you're pretty much in range for about any ability, yeah. Unless, yeah, you're, yeah, I'm in range for any ability. Awesome. Hopefully, I can do this. I got okay. beat to the punch, but I was also going to cast polymorph, but I want to <laughs> cast polymorph on the creature. Ah, right. Okay. Um, go ahead and try. Okay. So, uh, just roll. Well, he rolls a, a save if it's an unwilling polymorph, so. Yes. What does he have to roll? Right, Wisdom a... 14. Yeah. So, that, yeah, sorry about this, of course, but it's another legendary save, and he will turn <laughs> that into a, he will turn that into a success immediately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not being polymorphed. Well, that's thankful to know that that's all his legendary action for this round gone. So, um, does that end your turn, Artist Smith? He's not... I'm not gonna let himself be polymorph. I am going to go over here with Rania. Okay, sure thing. Um, all right, so uh, Tyrannosaurus Gumio, is, Gumio yes. uh, Gumio, it's your sure. turn. What would you like to? What would you like to? Uh, the small, portly man that once was with a scraggly beard and unkempt hair. Uh, now an apex predator with 50 feet of movement uh, will charge into the fray. Uh, All right. Stepping over Belagos, uh, now puny and diminutive form, uh, and take a huge tromp uh, straight into the tusks. Uh, no sure. care given. All right. So you get to multi-attack as a Tyrannosaurus. Yeah. So I can so... make one bite and one tail, but I can't use both on the same target. So just the bite. Mm -hmm. 17 to hit. Uh, a 17 is a hit. Yeah. Nice. All right, we do 4d12 plus seven damage. A step up from my pan, which does this is very D4. good. <laughs> All right. He's unfortunately immune to your uh, grapple, of course, because yes. he is uh, he is uh, Just giant. Too damn creature. big. Yep. All right, so we've got 31 damage. Yes. Yes. You're going to be that big, actually. Yeah, 31 damage is very good, and that's not something he can legendary resist, even if he had the abilities left. So yeah, 31 damage is a lot. You take a giant bite out of the boss side. Very good. That'll be my turn. <laughs> All right. Very nice. As this thing just makes huge sounds throughout the forest, the heavy thumps, the unusual sounds of an animal never hunted before in these forests. <laughs> this like heavy Tyrannosaurus Rex feet stomping into the soft earth. But uh, Belagos, it's your turn. As behind you, there is a scarier creature than the boar somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Come out of nowhere. This is like full Jurassic Park when they're being chased by one dinosaur, and then another one comes out and tackles that one. There you go. There's always a bigger boar. <laughs> yeah, very much so. He's he's uh, kind of freaking out a little bit, uh, trying to hold his intestines in after what just happened, <laughs> and uh, in in a panic, uh, he's he's going to call on his ancestors, and he's going to run around the side, and I'll take the uh, the dodge action once I get here. Uh, okay. Calling upon my dwarven heritage to heal me up a little bit. All oh, right, I thought you were doing spiritual guardian. Okay, yeah. Uh, what's this? Is this a um, um, this is uh, one, a or? feat? Yes. Uh, this is the dwarven fortitude feat. Ah, right. Okay. It'll be a D twelve plus my con modifier. Nice. So go so ahead and roll that. D twelve. What's con? And my con is oh, plus four, so. So plus four. That's good. Yep. Yeah, I mean, definitely, yeah, uh, indeed. Um, there is little more in this universe that is more stalwart and more stubborn in that they won't die than dwarven ancestors and dwarven fortitude. And you do indeed muster that ability and bring it forth into a real physical action as you feel your wounds close up in the same way as your ancestors screaming at you, don't give up, fight this creature. Yes, sir. Uh... With that, however, I do not have anything else I can do. Well, thanks for making me build it up and nothing. And <laughs> get around to cower <laughs> down behind this massive boar a little bit. <laughs> From the he very much wants to fight, but uh, no. Sure. <laughs> All right, so Renio, it's your turn. Okay. Um, I know what I want to do. I just don't know how exactly to go about it. So help me with this, Harry. Sure. Um, I want to look down to my wolf and say, okay. Sirtis, go back to Artemis. Her mission is complete. Her animal is going to kill us. Go. And I All want right, to send sure. him to go 
he knows where she is. Go try to find her and see if she'll help So us. he can move 80 feet of movement a turn, um, which I'll say will be enough to get to them. Roll me a survival check to see how long that would take. Sure. This is just a free action, by the way, to speak to Serta, so that's okay. fine. Um, what did you get? 14. Yeah, you estimate with a 14, that would take around four full rounds of combat to get Artemis back here in that time. But Artemis being a god, maybe that may be different for her. You're not sure how she works that well. Maybe once so. she gets the message, she can come back faster. <laughs> yes, perhaps. But is that, uh, you can still have an action, I'll say, with that. That's pretty basic stuff, just telling um, you both to go. Well, the T-Rex is kind of in my way. Um, I'm going to... That's okay. Let's see, I'm going to move into the tree here and I'll go ahead and shoot a couple more arrows at the boar. Just Okay, sure, go ahead and see what you can do with it. A 10 is a miss, unfortunately. And a 9 is the miss. They just plink off the tusks. They basically collide with the tusks as it's shaking its head in anger from being attacked. Um, each time you just see the arrows spinning into different directions and sort of sticking up in the ground around it, but not attacking the boar itself. But uh, does that end your turn? Yeah, that'll do it. All right, it's the boar's turn. He rolls a recharge quickly to see if he can get his blessing of Artemis back, uh, which is a 1d6. He does not. Therefore, rather than using his blessing of Artemis, um, he will use his blessing of Apollo. So as a bonus action, the boar can disengage and move an extra 30 feet of movement. Um, that's meant to say without, without, yeah, without provoking opportunity attacks, he's disengaging. So he's going to go um, 5, 10, 15, and he's going for Violetta. <laughs> Didn't manage to get up 20 feet of movement, so he'll just do standard multi-attack of two tusks a 27 and a 23 yeah those will both hit those will both hit an 18 and a 9 for on the first one uh, I would like to parry oh right okay you raise your AC by two or three is it or uh no parry allows me to oh uh, battle battle master parry got you yeah Um, to reduce the damage sure by yes by my superiority die so reducing the damage by seven all right, so you take 11, 20 points of damage total. As this thing just comes up to you and it just digs a, a couple of tusks in and almost tries to do the same thing to you it did to Adonis by sinking as many tusks as it can, but it only gets one of them in and it's not a deep cut. You managed to stifle it that well. But um, that will end his turn, but his legendary actions are refreshed. So via letter, it's your turn. I am going to lay into this creature with my uh, glaive at this point. Uh, okay. All of these are going to be great weapon master attacks. Uh, so the Very first well. one uh, is a natural four, so no. Uh, second That's one enough. is a natural 19, so 21. Minus five. Oh, sorry, a natural Plus 19, seven, 21. Minus five. minus five is a hit. Yep, so he takes this one. And the third one is a natural 11, so 13. Oh, right. A 13 is a miss, yeah. All right, so one of those attacks. One of those attacks hits, but it did have Great Weapon Master. So. It did, so that's always nice. Uh, 5, 10, 19 points of slashing damage. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Yeah, finally, the glaive finds some soft spot on this boss, very thick hide, and sinks true as you start feeling the blade of the end of the glaive sink into the tenuous, stringy <laughs> meat of the boar. All muscle and gristle. It's very hard. It's not like anything you've hunted before, but... You do manage to attack it with this mundane weapon. It does the amount of damage you need it to do. And yeah, he's not got a resistance. Then use my an action surge to oh. continue to lay into it. Nice. Okay. 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 Uh, <laughs> corporate weapon master attacks. Very nice. Uh, natural 13, so 15. That's a hit. Second attack. Natural also 13, so that's 15. That's it. And the pummel strike. You don't. Pommel strike on a action surge, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Well, then because a pommel strike is a bonus action, so. Oh, that's right. My mistake. So mm-hmm. the first one, uh, 9, 10, 23, and the second one, uh, 7, 11, uh, 21. This is the damage you're doing? <laughs> Rip that, into this thing. That's that's 40 
five points of damage. Wait, how are you doing that? <laughs> That's what my uh, question is. D10 plus yeah. four yeah. plus 10 from Great Weapon Master. Oh, you're Great Weapon Master. Yeah. I didn't realize. That makes more sense. Right, okay, yeah, definitely. This thing basically cleave into it with the same ferocity that it cleaved into Adonis, and you feel the glaive. You finally found that weak spot with the first attack that you left over your head and you sink it through, and this thing, it just sinks in tremendously now, so the, the shaft of the glaive is sinking into the point where you'd have to hold on to the very end of it to pull it out. You've almost impaled the thing as you pull it off. As this thing turns into like a roast hog, it is still alive, though, still breathing, still kicking, still goring people. Unfortunately, you do not bring it down. <laughs> but a tremendous amount of damage, though. Um, Shem, it's your turn. All right. Shem's eyes will roll into the back of his head, and a hound of ill omen is summoned behind the boar. Okay. Shadowy wolf from the Carthaginian origins. You're a shadow sorcerer. I did not realize. Uh, I thought you were a storm sorcerer with all your lightning. So yeah, <laughs> storm, storm flavor, shadow culture. Uh, yeah, yeah, so that's... Let me grab a uh, token. Uh, I'll grab. go ahead and roll his attack. Uh, he gets a bite attack, which will be nat 20. Ho, ho. Okay, that is very good. Uh, I will just um, put him here. I do believe that... Um, like to burst your bubble a bit there, Zach. Oh my god! Yeah, even more even more to burst your bubble a little bit is to say that once you summon the hand of it alone, it doesn't it oh, roll its own no. no, 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 no. You're right. I thought it's I got to yeah. attack on the first turn. I mean, yeah, I will say on its turn it can use that attack that you've already rolled. But oh it, my god. Does it on its turn? It, like because okay. that it rolls okay. its own initiative. So right, roll so go ahead is... and roll one D twenty plus two, I think, for a hand of alone. Okay. Yeah, so 14 is his initiative. Oh, All God. Right. Oh. Cool. But yeah, he's but thinking... It's always a bit annoying when something like that happens, right? Yeah, that's yeah, okay. On that's his okay. turn, I'll keep the damage, though, for his turn when it happens. Yeah, so. it would be 27 points of piercing damage on his turn. Very if, nice. Very if, nice. Uh, if he makes it alive. Um, okay, so then doing that, he now has disadvantage on all my on saves. Um, so then I will use my action. That was a bonus action. I use my action to use my staff and cast both lightning strike and thunderclap simultaneously this weapon is ridiculous oh yeah boy <laughs> go ahead uh, keep so... in mind that once i allowed everyone to have legendary action <laughs> legendary weapons i may have you know um this was only very this was only very rare it's not legendary Oh, right, that's fair enough what I'm saying. It's, I scaled things to keep in mind that you guys have legendary <laughs> items. <laughs> Not all so of us do. So that's the first one is uh, a dexterity save and then a constitution save. He's using his uh, legendary action to resist the first one. Okay. Um, so he will take um, 16 from that. Uh -huh. And then the full 10 from the other. Oh, no, he, he may roll save naturally, right? From the. Hang on. No, you lose that. You use that after you've rolled naturally anyway. So the first one is a dexterity save. Yes. And the second one's a constitution save. So yeah, he will use his um, legendary reaction on the first one, take 16, and he'll just take the 10 from the second one for 26 nice. points of damage. Nice. And he is um, deafened for a minute. Very well. Um, as Whatever this boar was benefiting from the sense of sound, he is not benefiting anymore, but you don't get the idea that it was very much. But still, <laughs> worth knowing, right? Um, yeah. Is that in your turn, Shem? Yeah, Shem will just say, I've hunted bigger things than you in Africa, and then that's it. Oh, I see. Big game hunter we've got here. Uh -huh. uh, I'll move back a little bit. So. Oh, no, I'm not going to say it because you <laughs> used the gun then. I was going to say, I, I hope he doesn't have an elephant gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you can't, you can't resist the elephant puns. <laughs> elephant pun? I said elephant gun. <laughs> oh, round the barrel. Yeah. They just keep coming. They just keep uh, coming. <laughs> right, um, Artemisia, it's your turn. Okay. So, do we think he's out of any legendary moves? Is a polymorph going to affect this thing? He still has some legendary moves left. I'll let you know that. Uh, let's. He's used three legendary resistances, though. I mean, that's. I don't no, know he's used. Yet. Yeah, but he gets them recharged every time it's his round over. Wait, what? Yeah. He can't, oh it's not just once a combat. It's every round. He gets three to choose from. He's got one that costs two, but he's not used it yet. Okay. Oh, okay. okay, so we're going to do... We're going to use my... I think it's my last spell slot. No, I have more. We are going to use spike growth 
Okay, that's a very good move. Um, what radius would you like it, and where would you like it? I will put this. Foot. Would that be uh, enough? Wait, hang on. I want to make it so you don't hit your allies, really, don't you? So maybe like. Uh, um, I don't want to hit them. Yeah, like you'd want it like here. Would get the boar and no one else. But you know, it's not directly where he is. Everyone else, it would hit somebody of an ally, I think, unless you did it here. Uh, here. Uh, no, I definitely want it in the direction that it's going, so we'll put it... Uh, here would be um, yeah. an okay choice, maybe. It dodges the letter and the Tyrannosaurus, so... Yeah, that'll, that'll okay. work. So yeah, yeah, so he'll make a saving throw? Uh, or... Um, no, it's... The area becomes difficult terrain for the duration... When a creature moves into or within the area, it takes 2d4 piercing damage for every 5 feet it travels. Okay, sure. Um, we'll get around to that on the boar's turn then. But that's a good move, yeah, absolutely. Is that any turn though, Artemis here? Uh, do I have anything else? I don't think any of my cantrips will go that far. Alright, no that's... problems. Yeah, I think that's it. Not cantrips? I don't think you can use cantrip in the same move as a spell, unless you've got a sorcerer, so... Okay, yeah, no, that's yeah, it. Yeah, unfortunately not. But yeah, no problems. Um, Nico, it's your turn. All right. Um, let's see. The Boris turned to uh, lay into Violetta, uh, and yes. Grumio, uh, he's kind of offended by this, because he's now one of the biggest uh, threats here, he thinks, anyway. Uh, mm. He'll take his uh, <laughs> one of his legs and uh, put it into the hind haunch of the boar and reaches uh, Maw forward to bite at the nape of the neck and uh, make sure this thing faces him. All right, sure. Go ahead. All right, bite attack. 23 to hit. 23 is a hit, yep. Yeah. How much Four. damage will this do? One damage. That's insane. Ooh. My God, there's a lot of damage. Okay, yeah, very nicely done. As you say, yeah, you begin into the nape of the neck. Similar to a lion hunting a gazelle, you know where the weak point is. Sim like Simply from the Tyrannosaurus brain melding with your own, you know how it hunts. And indeed, it does sink your giant teeth, somewhat half a foot long, each tooth, into this boar's neck. And whatever you don't drag out from the boar in flesh, you sink into with your teeth. And you feel a splatter of blood against your tongue as you do some heavy, heavy damage to the boar. And it will use its reaction to strike you back. No, not reaction, no, legendary legendary action to strike you back. Um, hang on, has it used legendary action this round yet? It has. Maybe it wants to hold on to do its thing. Yeah, it's going to... Mm, does it want to do legendary action to... No, it doesn't want to do that at all. It wants to do legendary action attack on, um, on the Tyrannosaurus for right. one tusk attack. Uh, 11 is a miss, I assume. It is indeed. Oh, uh, is a Tyrannosaurus AC more than 11? 13. All right, no worries then. Yeah, it tries to sort of shake its tusks as you're biting it, trying to basically damage you with it as you are forced to get close to it with your neck, with your face, as you bite it, but it can't get its tusk against what it's probably the first time this boar has ever come across something that's got a thicker hide than it has. But yeah, it's uh, Belagos' turn. What would you like to do, Belagos? Right, so... <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and charge forward. Uh, as I do so, I'm going to draw out two hand axes, and I want to try to stab these in and climb my way up to the top of this thing, as I'd rather not be <laughs> under its feet. All right. We're going full Lord of the Rings, sort of. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ball. Oh, yeah. Okay, sure. Uh, um, I'll say that, um, just roll me a, I'll say a low DC um, acrobatics. No, athletics. Athletics for climbing, I'd say, actually. Ah, thank you. Let's see, what's that? Oh, 10. 10. I say struggle with it, but you can do it. Excellent. Uh, and if I can work my way up to the top of it, I'd like to bring out my maul and just start whacking it straight <laughs> in the head. All right, sure. Uh, taking out your maul's bonus action, but you still have your action to attack, so go ahead. Excellent. Uh, I should have two attacks with that, so I'll make the first one in a second. Ah, both um, these are um, these are damage rolls, though. These are not. Um, oh, oh, yeah, the attack rolls. Roll the yeah. attack. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Good damage rolls, though. We can keep them if you want, uh, as long as you hit the attacks. An eighteen will be a hit. 
and a nine will be a miss, so he takes ten damage. Yes. All right. That'll be the end of it. Okay, uh, so with that, it's Rainier's turn. This thing is looking bloodied, but it is still alive. Okay. Extremely bloodied, in fact. So, given Rania's struggle with her bow, she's just extra mad now. So, I'm going to just narrow my eyes at him, fire my bow two more times, this time um, with Sharpshooter. Just okay. Be. Okay. Sharpshooter is in effect. Both attacks with Sharpshooter. Well, the 12 was certainly missed then. Yeah. Because that, that is a 7. Yeah. The 23 will hit. As an 18, so go ahead and uh, do 14 damage. Where do you Plus plug in? It, the hunter's mark is still on, right? Plus the hunter's mark, yep, it's still on him. Four more. So that's... Uh, Total of 18. 14, 18. 18 damage, yeah. Still alive, but um, again, it's weakening down now. It's barely being able to lift its gigantic weight under its four sort of stubby legs. But it is still alive. Um, I'm going to just duck a little further back into the tree line. <laughs> And that'll be it for me. Sure. Um, getting close to the um, to the hand of Illumin's turn, not quite its turn yet. Got to remember that roll that it got though. Um, right. So it is the boar's turn, and it will try and recharge its blessing of Artemis and blessing of Ares, which it does, um, and it uses blessing of Ares to add an extra three d ten to its next roll. Uh, and it's going to go for you, Violetta, with a double Tusk attack. So a 22 and a 10. 22 will hit. All right, so you take 17. Perry. <laughs> All right, okay, sure, go ahead. All right, that's another. Uh, reduces it by six damage. All right, so you take 11 from that. And with the Blessing of Ares, it becomes another 21. So you take 11 plus 21, which is 33. No, it's not. 11 plus 21, which is 32. So uh, it's 32 damage you take in total. Ooh. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, Harry, <laughs> yep. just out of curiosity, I should have asked this on my turn. Did my wolf make it to Artemis that round? Uh, it's on its way. Okay. And now it's most likely there right now, and then Artemis and the rest are on their way back. Okay. So be a letter, it's your turn. I am not doing great, but I suppose I will use a... I will use a goading attack on it. Oh, okay. Um, uh, for my first attack, which will. Also... <laughs> I'm not doing great, so I'll do an attack which forces it to attack me. <laughs> <laughs> the best option right now. Uh, so I will use a goading attack, and this will be all of my attacks are great weapon master. Okay. Uh, a natural 12, so that's 14. Plus uh, 7 14 is just a miss, unfortunately. That's a disappointment. Oh, so you say, uh, did you say 14 plus more, or? No, 12 plus 2. 14. Ah, right, yeah, sorry, no, I miss, unfortunately. All right, well, then the second attack, I will not use another superiority die. Uh, that is going to be a 15 plus 2, 17. Is it? Yep. And the pummel strike uh, is going to be uh, 9 plus 7, because can you great weapon master a pummel strike? Mm, I don't think so. I didn't think so. All right, 16. Well, no, yeah, I'm going to say no, because you could do 10 damage plus some um, things like that on everything, so... Um, yeah. yeah, sure. So how much damage total is that? That's like a good amount, right? It's a good chunk. Uh, the first attack is going to be 7 plus 10 plus 4, 21. Okay. And then the Hummel Strike is going to be 2 plus 4, 6. 2 plus 4, 6. Okay, yep, yeah, you're getting there. You're getting there. This <sighs> thing is bleeding from all angles. Indeed, yeah. <laughs> Laying into it with your glaive, the letter is just like for some like it's trying to attack you, but every time it does, you know where its tusks are going to be, so you can sidestep them, and your glaive just sinks in and digs out more of this thing's flesh. And this thing, if you imagine a normal boar being able to feed like twelve people, this thing could feed one hundred and twenty. It's massive, but you are ch cutting out chunks of this huge amount of flesh that are just falling to the floor. Now you're not only making it bleed. You're actually physically cutting the flesh from this thing and letting it drop around, but it is still up. Kind of a low man. How much damage is that, Zach? It was 23 piercing when we did it. 23? I oh, is so close, but it's <laughs> not enough. It's not All right. quite enough. All right. But it is Shen's turn, so... 
I am going to run into a line with it so I don't hit anybody else. I'm going to prep lightning bolt pointed at it, but I'm okay. going to hold my lightning bolt until after Grumio attacks because I want Grumio to take it down. So there I'm hoping that, that Grumio takes it down. Indeed, there is a thorn in your side in that plan. It is Artemisia's turn. <laughs> Uh, I will say that aloud, though. I'll say, uh, uh, dude, let <laughs> Grumio be the hero. Let him be the hero. And I'll I get that lightning bolt charging right through it. All right. Sure. Uh, Artemisia, what would you like to do? I am going to move right up to the edge of the spike growth. Okay. And I'm going to... Waiting with bated breath there. Is this it? Come on, I am going to do Ice Storm. Okay, whatever that is, it probably does it. <laughs> right. let's, do the, let's see how this plays out. Uh, Ice Storm, it's um, one of those rare used abilities. Uh, it's um, let's see, a big a big, um, big area of effects, right? If I'm right in saying? Or? Yes. A hail of rock hard ice pounds to the ground in a 20 foot radius. 40 foot high cylinder centered on a point within range. All right, sure. So, um, in this otherwise sort of paradise utopian island of pure sunlight weather all the time in air, um, suddenly an anomaly occurs. And there is, in fact, a very white cloud with black edges that appears some 40 feet above the area of effect. And being that he has less than four health, a 46 will automatically kill him. So as these icicles fall from this cloud, do you want to explain how they hit and how you kill this boar, please, Artemisia? <laughs> oh no, the T-Rex was supposed to kill it. But... Ah, well, there you go. You didn't know that. <laughs> all of the all of the shards rain down from the sky and it is just, just pummeling it with these massive blocks of ice as they just slam into its head, its back, its side, and it just... It, just crushes it under a mound of just heavy ice. Yes, I love it. What happens, definitely. Ice falls from the sky, as you say. Several massive blocks, bludgeoning damage at first. This thing can bear it. This thing's lifting itself up. Every time these huge blocks of ice slam it to the ground, it staggers itself, but it lifts it back up. That is until one final block of ice, one single block of ice is not bludgeoning. It is an icicle. It is sharp, it is heavy, it is coming down hard, and it hits the ball directly in the base of its skull. The same way it does when you sort of get right at the connection between the skull and the spine, and it is instantly dead as this icicle sticks out of it, having penetrated it like a giant icicle spear from the skies. The ball is dead. Anything <sighs> oh. uh, after that one. Ooh. I'm going to take a swing at that icicle with my maul just yeah. to make sure the thing is really dead. And it sh The icicle shatters, leaving the wound open, and there is a spurt of blood, and you can see the vacancy of flesh where there should be, a single exact silhouette of where the icicle was and the absence that the icicle brought with it. You can definitely tell the boar is dead. This ancient creature, blessed by gods has been defeated. I but, want its tusks. <laughs> yeah, you can get to work harvesting its tusks, but over the horizon comes Serta the wolf, um, looking down to you, Rainia, and giving a single sort of yipping bark to you, sort of like an attention-grabbing bark. But um, it's only doing that because standing on the cliffs uh, come Artemis, Apollo, and Ares, looking down at the events that have happened. Uh, and looking to each and every one of you, and especially looking to the corpse of Adonis, there's a crack in the sky, a large, horrible sound of forewarning, of terror, of a fear that all gods have and all mortals should have. For there is one thing that all mortals fear, and one thing that all gods fear. This once idyllic island of Circe gets overcome with a giant storm, it closes in, it begins to narrow. It was surrounding the island at first and it begins to close in on it, overcoming it until you look up above and it's just a dome of black clouds everywhere. As Artemis Apollo and um, Ari stand with arms folded looking down at Adonis and suddenly 
there's a single crack of lightning. And before you stands the figure of a man with an, an immense physique, but at the same time, an aged wisdom about him. As he looks down, as he appears from a single crack of lightning, it seems to dissipate around him and all other plant life around him dies instantly. And he stands there amongst the crackling lightning until it feels like it's wearing off. The air around you can see him coalescing in lightning storm and go to a small effect around him as though his very presence on this place is unwelcome and it's continuously sparking against him. And he looks to the three gods overlooking on the cliff and he simply, he simply says, vengeance is done. And at the same time, although he's just come and gone in a single second, the figure is struck by lightning himself and he is gone. And the three figures above turn their backs, Artemis Apollo and um, Ares, turn their back on the corpse of Adonis. And you can hear them chatting about, chatting to each other, laughing as they walk away from the corpse of the dead prince of a... Uh... I planned this. Planned. Uh, he was kind of a kind of a dick. <laughs> exactly my sentiment. Could have happened to a better person. <laughs> I hope we only did Artemis proud. I believe we did. Uh oh, sorry, and I'll snap my fingers and T Rex form will dissipate. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> I was about to give a, like a, a roar, so I'm glad I, uh, uh, all right. Uh, I love that. Halfway through. <laughs> wow, uh, wow, that's strange. <laughs> you are uh, wonderful, well, Grumio. I will, tell, I will tell Ovid of your incredible powers. He is never, we all ever, ever going to believe that. Quite impressive, Grumio. Quite impressive. Uh, well, uh, thanks. Yeah. Perhaps. I'm just like, well, I'm just hacking off tusks right now while I'm doing oh. it. Oh. Can I get one of those tusks just for the memory? Uh, after I get to my measurements, okay. And then I have to, like, like holding them up, trying to see. <laughs> I don't think Aphrodite's going to be too pleased when she learns of the events that have just occurred. Perhaps we should get back to Ovid and get off this a island. A wise uh. assumption, Rainia, as there is a whale in the forest. The whale that can only belong to somebody who has lost a loved one. A strangled, horrible, ill-conceived, um, pushing the voice to the boundaries of what it's capable of, echoing through the forests, surrounding you as though it's bending around the trees and reaching your ears. A horrible screech of mourning that gets louder and louder the longer you talk, Bones from. We should go. I agree with Rania. We need to go. Uh, yes, with all haste, hopefully. Let's go. <sighs> sure. On your way out of this sort of crevasse, though, you do, do run across the same... When Aphrodite saw you interacting, Amy, with Adonis, you had this horrible... As, a, as though for a split second, the beautiful visage faded, and what you saw was the ugly face of jealousy, which is Aphrodite's alter ego. And for that, as now you see the same thing, not jealousy, but envy, envy for what she's lost in this world, as though she's not something she wanted, she was jealous of other people having, but something she needed to keep has been gone. And as you guys are um, exiting, she's just going to grab, I'll say, hmm, who would she go for? Um, Belagost. As you guys walk past her, as she makes her way down to Adonis's corpse, and she just looked deep into your eyes, Belagos, to this blackness of her eyes, this deep, dark void that can only come with the mourning of a loved one, penetrates. It looks deep into you. It looks through you. It looks through your eyes. It's penetrating your body deep. And she just says a word through gritted teeth. You did this! And go ahead and roll me a 10d10, Belagos. <laughs> So let's see, there's five. <laughs> it's your role, it's not Aphrodite's. <laughs> okay, Belagost, you age 57 years of your life. In this single, this single moment that Aphrodite looks at you, you can feel wrinkles forming in your face, 
feel aches where there wasn't any before. You can feel your, your legs dangling, weedy, as though they haven't walked for 57 years. And she just drops you like a mass, crunkling onto the ground before she approaches um, her fallen loved one, a paramour. And as she great cradles Adonis's fallen form under the rain and storms that do not belong on this island, anemones begin to grow around Adonis's body, red flowers, as she just beats her chest in mourning. She's not a person who suffers mourning in silence. She screams. She beats her chest and she turns into a frenzy. And the storm around her lets her know that this is a vengeance accepted by the gods. This is something she has earned. And this is something she must deal with. And that is where we will end tonight's one shot from Pantheon. Oh. Yay! Yeah, yeah. Great time. Wow, that was awesome. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Drama beyond the gods. Who knows? Maybe it is that each of the Artemis, Apollo, and Ares have been wronged by Aphrodite in the past. Let's say why. Because it's always a good fun to go into the actual history, I find. <laughs> so, um, Adonis, Artemis, um, Aphrodite killed her devoted follower, Hippolytus. Apollo punished Aphrodite for blinding Apollo's son. Um, but there's also um, Ares, who is just consumed with jealousy for his love with Aphrodite. The three of them got together and got to get at Aphrodite's lover, Adonis, who's the better target. On the day of his return, the three have got together and given him a gift of the Etramine good boar, something he could have never possibly slayed alone. And they were right to assume, as he died immediately upon confronting it. And the god who appeared, who will remain nameless, although many of you may be able to assume who it was, decreed that this justice is warranted and allowed before you disappeared in a flash of lightning. And that's all that you need to know about the island of Aea, what happened 200 years ago in the Pantheon campaign, which to this day, every year, on this date, the women of Greece lay out a statue of Adonis, and they beat themselves the same way Aphrodite did. And they scream, they send themselves into a frenzy of grief to mourn the loss of the most beautiful man that's ever graced Greece with his presence. So yeah, I hope everyone enjoyed it. That's the one shot. It was great. Absolutely, it was fantastic. <laughs> Next um, time Shim comes back, there will be two boar tusks duct taped to his <laughs> I was about to say, you're gonna glue them on, buddy? Yeah. Yeah. Your grief duct tape. Yeah. yeah. Duct tape, glue? What is this? This is gonna have to be some twine and rope. <laughs> Um, I just want to take a minute to welcome all of our new players who came and hung out with us tonight. You guys were awesome. Um, keep tuning in because you might see some of these faces on some upcoming streams, maybe some new campaigns, maybe some Hell yeah. are already running. No, yes. No one can actually see me nodding, but I'm nodding. Yeah, absolutely. Of course. <laughs> Amy's right. Everyone here was amazing tonight and it was good fun. Everyone, you know, make sure you're following because Everyone here, I think, is more than capable of being on stream, but that's not for me to say, you know. But someone here will be maybe the new Pantheon player or in one of the new campaigns we're starting. I am of the opinion that every DM on the channel is of a very similar ability. So if you enjoy tonight, you'll probably enjoy the Saturday campaigns and the campaigns that are starting in the future. So do make sure to tune in for them. They're all good fun. Yeah. Right, but I would call out that. Um, again, no show tomorrow. We've all got a night off, and we'll be back next Friday. Yes. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Thank you yeah. very much. Thank yes. You. Take care. Take Bye. care. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye.